So we have MVL here with black. Man, MVL looks passive, Alexandra. Uh, looks like he's under severe pressure. That C7 pawn is really ugly. Yep, and his rook on A7 <laughs> is uglier. Is yeah, I mean it's like a battle of the uglier, you know. It's like one of the brothers got the bad genes, but then you see the younger one, and you're like, I guess he actually got lucky. Yeah, that's how I feel. You know, my younger brother and <laughs> I, we uh, he definitely got the cute genes, that's for sure, and the, and the better hair. Okay. Um, but uh, uh no. Hello, and welcome to part two of today's Pro Chess League coverage. Uh, we are, well, I am International Master Levy Rosman, joined today by a, a person who I, I, I've, done, I've done one or two streams with, uh, Alexandra Botas. And, uh, I'm ha happy to be here for another joint stream with the one and only Levy Rosman. We streamed together yesterday, and we have the pleasure of covering the Central Division in the Pro Chess League today. Yeah, so speaking of the Central Division in the Pro Chess League, uh, I think it would be fair to point out some of the players. Uh, of course, one person is the marvelous Frenchman with two last names, Maxime Vachet-Legrave. He has just started streaming to twitch.tv slash mvlchess. He's one of many people who's going to be uh, actually showing his games and walking us through the thought process as he, uh, you know, as he... He crushes all of all of the unlucky opponents that he's paired with. So, yeah. And if we don't have his Twitch link in the chat yet, we'll get it out for you guys in case you want to spy on what he's doing as well. Awesome. So, uh, why don't we, as I just mentioned, uh, take a look at the matchup? The first matchup of the day is between the Ljubljana Turtles, who are a Final Four team of last year. Looking to right. make it back, make it back to the Bay Area in competition this year. They're playing the Marseille Migraines. Uh, it is a three GM team for Ljubljana, um, which is a talking point that we will we will get into. Uh, one of the kind of team makeups we actually see it uh, also between Baden Baden and Amsterdam. Uh, Baden Baden fielding three GMs as well, and it's kind of this, this distinction. Would you would you like to have three GMs? Um, or you know or not and uh after that we have yeah and i would also like to point out that although the Ljubljana turtles made it in the final four last year 
Right now, they're in the bottom two of their section. So they're actually at risk of getting relegated and not even making it to qualify for the next Pro Chess League. So they're going to be fighting their hardest to at least get back in the top six. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so... Oops, sorry. All good? Just, um, yeah, just, I think just... You're, you're just giving everybody a preview of all the teams we're going to have playing today. So we're going to have eight teams playing today. Right now on the screen, we have the Cannes Blitzstreams and the Berlin Bears. Uh, are we going to go take a quick look back at the previous teams first? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, in, in chronological order today, we have Ljubljana, Marseille, Baden-Baden, and Amsterdam. And uh, then we have uh, Cannes versus Berlin, as, as Alexandra just mentioned, and Norway versus Barcelona. And those team compositions are as follows. Uh, we have another Maxime up top. Uh, but this one's a little bit lower rated uh, than uh, than MVL. But then we have Krikor. <laughs> yes. We have a famous uh, a famous Twitch streamer, and we also have Kevin Bordy. So two uh, internationally talented uh, chess streamers on Twitch. That's uh, GM Krikor and Blitzstream. Uh, the team is actually named after his account, which is which is honestly quite nice. Uh, I would like to have like uh, Gotham Gotham Chesses or something along those lines. Uh, and then another famous streamer, Alexandra, Jon Ludwig Hammer. Right. Being the board one for the Norway Gnomes. Um, yeah, he's streaming this as well, and he's going to be a heavy favorite in all of his games, but I know he's feeling the pressure. He's been ask answering some questions pre-games on his stream right now. What? I wonder what those questions are like. Hey, Jon, uh, Jon how many points are you going to score today? Uh, four. Yeah, exactly. Four out of four. He was actually being a little humble. He was saying that although he's the favorite to win, they're going to be tough games. So we'll give him a little credit there. The favorite to win. So we yeah. saw this. We saw this lineup several times. Actually, the last time I saw that you did coverage with uh, with Amon, there was this Barcelona team, right? The team that yeah. has um, a really, really good board four that has consistently outperformed uh, his, you know, his his Elo. Right. And so the question that always gets asked is, if you were a manager of a team, Alexandra, would you field three GMs and a and a dark horse board four, or would you stack from twenty fours and twenty fives and kind of be, you know, balanced out on all four boards? Right. What do you think? That's a good question, Levy. I think the biggest way anybody would make that decision is determining whether or not that block black horse on board four is going to overperform. If you have a, you know, 2200, 2300, who's playing 2500 strength or similar to what the um, Barcelona's board four was playing 2700 strength. And of course you're going to stack those top three teams. It's just that those black horses aren't that easy to find. Yeah. There's always this question. Like, do we put a talented junior on board for, uh, for example, Hikaru Nakamura, who uh, is a, basically a rising Twitch icon at this point, super grandmaster for playing for the Seattle team. Uh, they have a talented board four player. Uh, I, I believe her, the name is Nino uh, on board mm -hmm. for Batsas, Batsas I believe something like this, like 2000 ELO. And you just never know if this person can, can get a scalp or a good win over a 23, 2400 player. That's that's pretty much all you need to to upset a match. Now, I don't know. Uh, with some of the matchups that we have today, you know, Barcelona is a great example of this. They have three GMs and a twenty three hundred rated player on the fourth board. I will point out that the twenty three hundred rated player on the fourth board has not been doing well so far. He's actually gotten zero points out of four. Yikes. Last time when I was covering their their uh, their match, um, international master Alejandro Diaz. Mm -hmm. Right now he's at five and a half out of eight, performing twenty six fifty. So we'll, we'll see if he can keep up the reputation of a strong board four. He's definitely feeling the pressure. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, I I think uh, what the the big th the big question kind of before the games went live, and the games will be going live in about one or two minutes here, uh, my friends. Is uh, is what are your predictions for the day? Who are you, who, you, do, you, do you have any... The good thing about cheering for these teams is that we don't have any emotional attachment, right? So we can just... No, none at all. <laughs> oh, unless unless you're playing the Fantasy Contest, which is a $10,000 grand prize event. And uh, you... I learned this on Danny's stream with Jen. Um, you can actually submit your lineup for Fantasy when Game 1 starts, like 10 minutes after the start of the first game. I didn't know this. So, so, chat, if you haven't done that yet, you should do it. Um, good point, Levy. So, 
I, I, let's see, what predictions do I have? Last time I was a heavy favorite towards the Barcelona Raptors, um, but the Norway Gnomes are number two in the Central Division right now, and the Barcelona Raptors don't have their board four. So I think this might be the matchup where the Norway Gnomes come to first place. What about you? Do you have any predictions? That, and that's not showing any bias to your good friend Jun Ludwig Hammer, right? That's uh, that's just not... an objective evaluation of... <laughs> exactly. Objective evaluation. As usual, I only do objective evaluations. Uh, I'm going to go bounce back style for MVL's migraines. And the question I always have is, are they playing with migraines? Or are they... And I, and I see some games have actually started from that match. Uh, are they playing with migraines or do they give their opponents migraines? Because that seems... Hopefully hopefully both. I mean, with the tough games, I'm sure they're giving some of their opponents migraines. Um, and you're right, three of the games have started, but it's still very early on. Right, so we should obviously take a look at Lion Beast, that's MVL, playing with the Black Pieces. Um, and of course, just a reminder for everybody, uh, the match format is always... Whoa! Move... A4! Uh, was 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 played in 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 uh in board three I believe in the other game, but we'll focus on um uh, on the okay, NBA you're looking game at now. Grandmaster Mateus Shebenik against FM Alban Delorn. No, no, I'm looking at uh at, at MVL Lion Beast. Got it. Okay. Uh, so Lion Beast versus uh, Med Medallia, which I think kind of sounds like metal, but probably means I don't know turtle uh, Ljubljana turtle. Maybe I'm pretty sure that. Another interpretation could be Laura Unique was an under-16 uh, girls champion. So maybe she's referring to that medal she got, you know, flaunting some of the silver <laughs> to scare off MVL over there. That's awesome. No, and I, I mean, you're always looking, and, and uh, I saw somebody in chat say the match <laughs> format is always, wow! Uh, yeah, I, uh, I cut myself off there. Uh, no, the match format is that your board one plays the <laughs> opposing team's board four, and then you, you kind of align toward the end. So boards one meet in the final round, and this builds suspense. This, <coughs> this format is very deliberate, um, with the idea in mind that maybe a board four can score an upset over a board one. I mean, that happened in the New York Marshals first round match. I don't know where else a board four upset a board one in the first yeah. round, but... Um, no, that Fidel Corrales was upset as well. Um, not, you know, actually emotionally upset on stream, but we've uh, he seen, probably was uh, probably as well, but we've seen a lot of upsets in the first round. So it's definitely one of the most interesting rounds when you see one of their board four take down one of the giants for the MBL game. That would be, you know, extremely difficult, but we'll, we'll see what happens here. The turtles speaking, are known for coming back. Speaking of the MBL game, uh, it, it seems as though, you know, the, his goal in, in a lot of these openings is to throw his opponents out of theory. Uh, so, you know, his opponent is WIM, kind of sets up here with a Catalan. This is mm -hmm. an extremely, extremely popular, solid opening uh, that you can play from, you know, at name a level X, you can play it again until you get to 2800. And MVL just kind of says, okay, I'm not going to commit a pawn to the center just yet. I'm going to trade off. This is a thematic trade on e4, landing a bishop here to kind of slow down white's development. And black is sort of saying, you have no convenient way of attacking my bishop on e4, because anytime you move your knight, I'm going to trade it off for the g2 bishop. So you kind of see white now developing around the bishop. But the, the time lead for MVL, the fact that he's only spent 10 seconds, remember everybody, the format is 15-2, so... He spent almost no time in the opening, and his opponent is already a couple minutes in the tank. Just kind of shows that he's a bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever tried the Catalan? I've never tried it. I keep wanting to try it, but... I tried the Catalan briefly, um, but I haven't played it for more than a couple of games. Building off what you said, though, I like how you pointed out the idea that MVL is trying to trade off his bishop on e4 here. And it seems like Laura's counterattack here was to just block off his bishop. If she can't trade it, she's going to at least try to make him control less squares on the board here. Exactly. She's just sort of taking free space. You know, yeah. if, if you let me play c4, d5, I'm going to do it. The only uh, downside is, and, and, I, and I know you like your g6 positions, uh, that dark squared bishop is kind of <sighs> dandy, isn't it? Just looking at the entire board now. And... Let's put it this way, my friends. Uh, objectively, at the highest level of chess, uh, the goal in the opening is to equalize first when you're playing with the black pieces. And, well, would you see, say that MVL is trying to equalize here when he's playing someone that much lower rated, 
or do you think he might switch up his strategy just no, to yeah. take advantage of it? Exactly. I was going to say not necessarily. Um, you can actually see here, like, he's traded off some pieces. He's given up his dark squared bishop that was relatively powerful, allows the queen to come into h6. But I think he's sort of saying, look, I'm 2700, 2780, and I sort of believe that I can win any position against you. And that's what you have to do as a top board. I've never been a top board, but <laughs> not yet, I would imagine... Not yet, guys. Just wait for it. Well, you know, uh, I would imagine that this is kind of, this is kind of the... Uh, the game plan if you're if, if you're a very strong player um, right um yeah so like you pointed out mvl traded off his dark squared bishop and his dark squares are a little bit weak around his king side but lucky for him white does not have her dark squared bishop so it's going right. to be harder for her to take advantage i'm guessing that his plan later on will be to create some sort of break probably on the queen side with b5 at some point since he doesn't want to move the king the pawns on e7 or f7 and not to interrupt you, but literally, as you said that, MVL said, you know what, it would be a good idea for me to play B5. And so he plays. I don't know if he said it, but you can watch if he said it at twitch.tv slash MVL chess. If not, he should have. I think your impersonation was spot on. So, but I'm really, I'm perplexed by this b decision by White. I, I think that White voluntarily doubled her pawns because she might have been a bit concerned that after Bishop takes F3, uh, that the move knight E5 was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And knight e5 would have pressured f3 and c4. Um, right. And, and then she would have had to give up the bishop for that. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not so, so sure what went into that, but we see MVL sacrificing a queenside pawn. Uh, this is called a temporary investment. And he will win it back with queen b6, queen b5, and probably get pressure down the queenside. But paying off better than most of my investments. So uh, nicely done, MV. All right. Well, this this is going to turn into a, a financial a financial advice stream as well. So why don't he's we hop getting around? Getting it back right away. Yeah, he's playing rook right. b8. So. Um, everybody, there is a command you can type in live chess. If you go to live chess at well the one and only chess.com forward slash follow hashtag PCL. Uh, you yep. should put a space in between those. Do not type that as one word. It won't work. I'm going to uh, put it in the chat as well in case people want to just copy it to make life easier for everybody. There you go. So cool. I've since... Mm -hmm. I've taken a gander into France's board too. That's okay. uh, Jules Moussard. I, I, I'm, always, I'm always confused when to say the S and when not in French. So... Um, uh, hang on, let me just catch up who's game. Oh, I actually met that's... Jules Moussard in a couple world youths. He's gotten a lot stronger. He was the back. He was an FM back in the day. Really? That's everybody who is a GM at some point. So. Well, he's an FM struggling with his internet connection. It seems he's got one giant red bar. I always learn. Excuse me. I always fear that that's me, but it's not. <laughs> not anymore. Not ever since this this computer got a major upgrade. So. Um, on the bottom right, everybody on the analysis board, we're still taking a look at the MVL game, and on the left side of the screen is um, the game that Jules Moussard, that's Anoel, is playing, uh, and he is going up against the number three of the uh, Ljubljana team. Got it. So, do you want to? Which game do you want to stick to? Let's stick. Let, no, let's stick to Anoel. I mean, MVL deserves attention, but MVL is a, a boring dude. He's he's played a very calm, very very solid position, but. Uh, here potentially a boring can... dude. I mean, it looks like she's trying. To <laughs> she's trying to fight. checkmate him, actually. <laughs> yeah. She's like, he might be a boring dude, but I'm not a boring girl. Watch out! I got F4, G5. She's just yeah. You know what? To give no, you know, fudge sickles towards MVL. Here. The, uh, the, yes, yes, or whatever treats that. What, what's a what's a good treat in Ljubljana? Can somebody please give us uh... some Slovenian treats, please? Yeah, she's saying, look, I might as well go gung ho. I mean, he's the world number what, like you know, top Three, top four. ten, and yeah, no, not not quite, because we've got a, we've got some twenty eight hundreds up there now. But uh, yeah, look, she. I'm, look, I'm actually a little afraid for him, mostly because any normal person would be when they see a queen on h six, no bishop on g seven, and a rook backing up that queen with two pawns on the fourth rank. Um, what do you think about this position, Levy? You know, I gotta, I gotta give the WIM credit. Rook a4, rook h4 is something that I would play. I mean, I mean, in hyper bullet in classical chess. She um, took, she took. Bishop yes. Coming. What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's oh, just sacrificing on h5, and and bishop b4. MVL is blitzing all his moves, so he must have worked something out here. Um, this is so strange. I mean, what if you just chop on passant here? Uh, 
yeah, I don't know what happens after G takes F6. Let's let's see. So G takes F6, she's threatening queen takes H7, right? I guess he could just defend it with rook F7. That might just stop the threat here. Um, I am a little bit confused, though, that he's blitzing out these moves. It would be very surprising if he had 24 moves of theory prepped up for this game. Shouldn't he be thinking a little bit longer when white has such an attack? No, but here's a really interesting situation. What if, yeah, like, what if just G6, and some other games have started between Baden-Baden and Amsterdam, but we have a very, very interesting situation. Like, what if white goes G6, says, I don't need to take you on Passan, I'm just going to push the pawn up, and... Uh, right, and, and in the worst case, she has at least a perpetual, but she's probably winning there also, because bishop takes f5 is coming. So... Or bringing the rook to g1 after king h1. Yeah, so if you go g6 and pawn will take, queen will take, I mean, yes, it's just a perpetual, right, at the end of the day. So queen g, you know, queen g6, queen h6, but if you play... I'm very confused, Alex. I just don't understand what there's not there's nothing there. I think maybe MVL missed the move G6, or he's doing the thing where you blitz a bunch of moves and um, you know, it doesn't um, it doesn't quite work out. I'm just gonna quickly replug my mic. Someone said it dropped. Alexandra is most likely getting a specs upgrade in the next few weeks. She's going to basically buy a microphone that's so powerful, it will not only never... Oh, and, she, and the move G6 is on the board, and MVL is taking the draw! I mean, he there... has no choice. No, oh, of no, course, no. no, I know, I know, but that's He's incredibly... He's for a draw. He's not taking a draw. Yeah, 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 that's, 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 that's very right. I, well. I have overpowered too many microphones. This is my fourth, so it's clearly not the microphones. It's me getting too excited at chess. Well, you just have to get, you know, you just have to get a, a microphone that can that can handle you at, you know, at your loudest and your quietest. That's all exactly. it is. You can't handle me at my worst. You don't deserve me at my best. No, right? but here's a question, Alexandra. What if you play queen h5? Mm -hmm. Queen h5, so he has to play king g7 or yeah, king g8. Yeah, queen h5, uh, not going queen h6. So everybody, a really good rule of thumb that I would say. Uh, if you can answer if, oh, don't bail now, don't bail now. No, no. Uh, she doesn't have to bail now. She still has options. Um, I like the idea of king h8, rook g1, but it might be too slow here. Yeah, so now, you know, now are we, it's, it's, you know, can we, can we play this move king h1? Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. So if so. we play king h1, um, what would, what would black even be able to defend with? How is he going to stop rook g1? He can't make space for his king by playing something like rook f7 because the queen is blocking on f8. Right. I, I just don't see what happens after king h1. Wow, all this she covers... Played it. She played it, she played it. King h1 is on the board. Wow, MVL is... Rook g3, what a move! Now that, that move carries shock value. Yeah. That move definitely... So now, what if you... I think maybe taking with the h-pawn is good because after takes, you always have queen g... Yes, and now... You can bring the rook to the h file. So check, queen h5, right? Wow. And now you open. So exact, right? Uh huh. Oh my gosh. And now, now, now what? So, king g2, rook h8. It's oh man, the nerves must be. Her heart must be pounding. This I is know. how I felt. You know. I mean, my heart is pounding for her. He just played rook g3 instantly. She's. I mean, she's better now. Um, she doesn't have any material advantage, but it seems like Black's King is in a lot of trouble here. The question is whether she's going to be able to keep it or if MVL is going to find a way to escape here. Yeah, I'm just... Man, this is... this is, this is is Oh, Queen E8, okay. So question, if you were playing Laura, Laura's position and you were 2300, uh -huh. would you try to fight for the win here or go find a perpetual out of fear that you're going to be outplayed by this beast. Of no, no, no. I think at the end of the day, you have nothing to lose. I mean, as, mm -hmm. as, uh, as, as the lower rated player, you know, yeah, like, like this is the worst thing that can happen, right? You bail into an end game where you're up a pawn and mm -hmm. well, you know, bless your soul. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, you might not want to play a suit, you know, a super jam in an end game, but when you're up a pawn and he has no counterplay, anything is possible. Right, um, right. So, uh, well, yeah. 
people are, exactly people are saying what if you just you know she had an option to trade the queen she's keeping the queens on the board because she wants to well mvl kind of understands that keeping the queens on the board is not to his benefit mm-hmm. so um yep he's trying to trade it off as fast as possible um yeah, okay, exactly. Now, now she has the option to take the queen. Okay, she didn't want to. She thinks that his king is in trouble. So if she can keep the queens on the board, force him to be defensive here, she'll have a better chance to win. But she just repeated moves now. So maybe Uh-oh. she's going to go queen h5 and queen e2. thing is, she's always winning. MVL has no counterplay in this position. And it's just, it's, it's just a miserable, miserable situation right now. Uh... Oh man, I wonder how the other players on his team are doing, but obviously this game is really interesting, so maybe we want to stay here for a little bit. Yeah, we're definitely we're definitely staying here. Uh we could we could potentially tune into some of the Baden Baden games. Uh we have like I am Dimitri, we have uh hmm. some very, very good players. Ina Agrest, who has had some very interesting games for her team right. in the past couple of weeks. Um, so Ina Agrest's game is still pretty early on in the opening, so Okay. That's okay. Um, let me see if there's any other interesting. Yeah, take a take take a gander. What yeah. what what do we have there? Uh, so the game between Grandmaster Nuki and Interim National Master Jabarok is tuning towards the end. They both have about a minute on their clock. It's an end game where it's a rook versus an exchange, but the side with the exchange has some pawns. So it looks like that might be pretty drawish as well. Grandmaster Nuki. Mm-hmm. Okay. I could tune into that one. Uh, yeah, so Laura, yeah, Laura Unuk uh, of Ljubljana is really, really, really thinking about this decision now. <laughs> Do yeah. I take the draw? Uh, I again, I just go. You have nothing to risk. I mean, if you, if in some crazy She's time pressure though, she's getting lower on the, on on the clock. Yes, but if I mean, you think about it. And the worst possible thing that could happen here is that you lose. Okay. Right. You were supposed to lose according to advanced statistical measures. But you're not <laughs> supposed to lose according to the current position. Exactly. You know? So it's one of these things. It's like, uh, you know. All if, I'm uh, saying is I wouldn't judge her too hard if she took the draw here. He has 10 minutes over her. She might be up a pawn, but it is tricky to not blunder under time pressure. Unless, you know, you're uh, international master Levy Rosin, who is a bullet god. No, I, I mean, I wouldn't give myself that much credit, Alexandra, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I won Blunder of the Week last Pro Chess League, so, actually, I might have won Blunder of the Month. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, you know, Ju- yeah, the, the, the Jules, Jules Musar has been battling bad internet the entire game, it seems, and the oh, other players on the team, um, we have Alban Delorme. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, uh, that is Albano87. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so she's traded queens in this game, she's but i traded I'm, queens. Okay. She's, she's, she's not, traded she's queens. not going for the draw. Mm-hmm. Nice. Bold. Meanwhile, my window, I think, is about to cave in from the speed of wind that is, that is demolishing New York City. Uh, so hopefully, uh, Laura Unu can stay as cool calm collected as i am right now as i fear for my life and uh convert this end game against mvl mvl right. is doing something that a lot of really strong players do and what's that he's got a really bad position and he's playing it really fast right. really fast to put pressure on the opponent and go hit me come on do it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. bring it on bring it on and so that you know, makes sense because yeah. when he plays fast, he's also encouraging Laura to play quickly, and a lot of us do it as a reflex, even if it's a not not the correct thing to do. Um, but we sh- maybe we can try to figure out what Laura's plan should be here. I mean, she's up a pawn, but one of her pawns is isolated on d5. She has two double pawns on the f4, yep. uh, on the f file. It's not that obvious to come up with a plan to win here. No, and you see MVL very quickly swooping in, and, and this is the thing, as a, as, a, as a very, very strong Grandmaster, you kind of, you, you have Rook endgames down a bit scientifically. I mean, right. you're very good at, you know, we see, I, I, I'm looking right now, if you actually look at this game on live chess, you've got Wesley So immediately suggesting the right move, kind of understanding the best way to put pressure. He's right now suggested this really clever move, F3. So if you play F3, 
Uh, the idea is that if black was to capture the pawn, the idea is not to retake, but to play rookie six check. Mm -hmm. And you would be forking the king, take the pawn on d6, defend the pawn on d5, uh, on d5 and slowly you will chop the pawn on f3 as well, because the king will be defending it. Uh, right. She overlooked that, now she's feeling the pressure. Man, it would be tragic if this game got away from her to a loss, but... I, I, I really hope it doesn't. Um, okay, so now she has to hold the c pawn she can't let it promote normally i would think that Ooh. rook c4 is the move here because you like to defend from the back but then it gets met by rook c5 and she loses instantly so the only way she yes, can one. defend this pawn is by playing rook e2 i believe or yeah or yeah yeah, rook rook yeah so coming from the the front of the pawn which is not ideal yeah um and now you know her king is cut off and Oh, this is this is a tough one to swallow. I mean, she's you know she's she's down to two minutes. Look at MVL. I mean, he's got twelve minutes on the clock. The guy is like a master bluffer. I mean, this is a master class in in uh... yeah. So yeah, well, I, I don't, it's still a draw, right? It's still a draw, but now it's getting a little bit more tricky, and she's getting down to a minute. Um, I think you, you know all of chat is pretty emotionally invested in this game right now yeah this I is hope, a tough I hope one. that she she gets a draw here she has Alexander, such a nice attack i want to see it why don't we why don't we check into this match uh or you know into into this particular matchup in a bit we do have we do have our third matches of the day starting uh between uh uh what well, is this team cans hey, yes can and uh, and berlin hang on i think mvl is about to push push this game no, Alexandra, don't don't hurt me. Okay, I, don't I, hurt I, me. I don't, want, I don't want to hurt you, but I think she's gonna lose. Oh no, D three. Oh, that's it. Just D three. D three is coming in Rook Rook D one, which. Oh, that's I so painful, D3 Alexandra. Instantly. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be a twenty seven hundred rated grandmaster, you know, on the cusp of twenty eight hundred, competing in the candidates. I want to say don't play like this, but evidently. If you do play like this badly, you have to be really good at getting getting out of this situation. Wow. I mean, that's it. Just C2, D3, and Rook D1. The, the Rook and the Pawn is just beautifully coordinating here. And, and MVL is going to steal one for his team. That's, that's, that's really the best way to describe it. I mean, I, I have nothing else to say, really. This is, this is really impressive. That, it, it, that was a great swindle. So... Um. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's okay. go. Let's go watch the Berlin. Let's go watch Berlin versus versus Can Alexandra. I feel. I feel. Uh. I feel sad. <laughs> I do too. Okay. Let's switch to the game. A little bit um, sad. Twitch chat me, is excited. Just let me know which game you're you're going to, and I'll join you there. Sure. Well, we can. We've got. We've got our good friend Krikor. Uh, he's playing with the black pieces, and uh, well, we're tuning into this game on move seven, and it, and it seems as though he's already under tremendous pressure. Mm -hmm. Um. Yep, I'm I'm there too. Wow, fun fun position. Yeah, we can another king side attack here. Um, so this game is coming out of a four knights English. It's an opening I actually play quite a bit. So c4, e5 to catch everybody up to uh, to the live game in front of you. And this idea of knight d5 is very interesting. Uh, the point is that if black is to capture on d5, white will take with the d pawn. Excuse me, the c pawn. And although you're doubling your central pawns, the pressure on the knight is very uncomfortable for black. Black is going to have to find some sort of reroute, either to e7 or b8. Mm -hmm. And the dark squared bishop on b8 is not particularly well placed anymore because it doesn't have a target. So fast forwarding now, and knight g5 created a tactical threat. You can look at it on the smaller window. Okay. Uh, and also, yeah, um, MVL just won his game. Just, just putting that fight. I don't want to hear it, okay? <laughs> I'm sad. You're right. I shouldn't do this to your emotions. Okay, and, I'm, let's check out your analysis board. You know here. what? You know what the craziest thing is? MVL had the worst position of all of his teammates, the fastest, and he also scored the first decisive result. Put that yeah. into perspective. How quickly yeah. he turned that around. I mean, I just, I just don't know what to say. Yep. Great it job. Felt like he just had no doubt that he was going to win. He did not care. He played so quickly. He's like, eh, I'll pull it off. Perpetual on the board. Eh, I'll pull it off. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, there was Propet literally standing in... Yeah, so yeah. this idea of knight g5, everybody, it, it's to put pressure on the knight on f6. Really, white is creating this threat. Queen takes h7. If you look at the uh, small mm -hmm. board, uh, so queen takes h7, and you're adding kind of 
a little bit of an attack here on f6. If black takes on d5, you are coming with queen takes h7, and that's why g6 was played. And white immediately, this pawn on g6, uh, kind of recognizes that this pawn on g6 is a hook, meaning it's a target for a potential kingside pawn storm, and we right. see black rerouting and, well, uh, look at this play here. I mean, this is this is play reminiscent of, uh, of Ljubljana's board 4. Storming ah. the fort, g4, h4, and... Uh, right, right. I mean, to... white's queen is a little bit further behind here, but the queen on c2 is still pointing towards the h7 pawn. Yes. And uh, the idea is similar. Like you said, white wants to create some type of pawn break on the king side. He's going to have to decide how to do it. Um, maybe h5 is coming at some point. The only right. tricky thing with h5, chat, is that whenever you're defending these positions as black, you normally don't want to take. You want to be more reactive and just try to close it up as soon as possible. So white is going to have to be pretty careful about when it makes sense to push h5. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Um, so if, you know, you, you're, as, as, as Alexandra mentioned, when you put this kind of pawn mass out on the king side, it's always really the question like, do I push? Which pawn do I push? Do mm -hmm. I just leave them there? Kind of as a who, chat trivia. Who in chess said the threat is more valuable than the execution? That's a great line. I wish I knew the answer. So, chat, I hope you, you do are know the answer, better Alexander. at chess trivia don't, than I am. Don't be humble. Don't be humble. Oh, I, don't. I'm not being humble this time. You, you, no, no, no. Alexander knows the answer, chat. Who said the threat is more valuable than the execution? Um, so we see Naka, Tal, Fisher, I said it, Kasparov, Nimzo, Levy just did. <laughs> okay, everyone is right. You know, this is, this is... <laughs> This is, uh, this is communist education. Everybody correct. So, um, lots of people said it. Exactly. I see. I see. Uh... I wanted to be included in that as well. So, I had to join chat. For yes, second. exactly. Fun. Okay. So, uh, Grandmaster Creaker just played Bishop G7. It, it makes sense. He wants to put his bishop back on that square to help defend against the oncoming attack. Um, I think the most natural move White has to calculate here is probably h5. That's the mm -hmm. most tempting thing on the board. Um, yeah, yeah. How would Black respond to h5? Uh, Black would respond by getting a very, very bad position, allowing a gigantic attack, but playing all his moves relatively instantly, and then uh, making a comeback in stunning fashion and winning the game. Oh! Oh, where have we where have we seen that before? I'm having deja vu. <laughs> it's almost like chess players have some type of pattern recognition or something. <laughs> I know. No, I don't. Okay, that's the last mention of that game. I I've won a, a handful of blitz games with this kind of very caveman style chess, uh, as they say, the caveman hack attack style chess. Okay. Oh, a yes. three. So he was worried about knight b four first. White is even more patient than I thought. He's trying to remove any threats Black has because. Right. He thinks his kingside attack is too strong. It's coming no matter what black does. So he might as well do it at the optimal time. That's exactly right by Alexandra. So rather than trying to play h5 right away, you kind of know you always have this resource on board potentially. And mm -hmm. so a3, uh, chat, pattern, rec pattern recognition exercise. All right, we get in chat involved a lot today. Um, by the way, the answer to that question was Aaron Nimsovich. Yes, correct. Um, what opening for black has this kind of structure? A pawn, E pawn, and queen on C, uh, C2 or C7. Um, so, which opening, everybody? That's another chess trivia. As we oh. transition to uh, an Amsterdam Mosquitoes and Baden-Baden matchup. Yeah, and also, just as... But the quote you told me reminds me a lot about international relations theory towards war, about ha just having a threat being a nice type of defense. So okay. I, I can understand now why kings early on were playing chess as a way of learning war strategy. Just an interesting tidbit for chess. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. See, Chad, this is the, this is the benefit <laughs> of, being, uh, of being a host of a show, but having <laughs> zero talent at anything else, but being joined by somebody who is like eclectic, you know, smart in a lot of aspects, accomplished, and I'm just, I just play hyperbullet on the internet, that's really what I'm gonna I do. take your compliments even if I don't deserve it. Um, uh, okay, so we're at the, another Maxime L game. No, it's yes. not MVL, but it works. I'm taking, we're taking a look now at uh, Khans versus, uh, I, I have such a difficult time saying Khan when there are so many letters at the end of right. that, but I'm gonna do it. Um, yeah, these French, French players. 
and that's uh, that's Lagarde, and that's uh, I, I believe it's Bizu is something like this is his is his username, but I might be completely Bizou mistaken. Bizu means kiss in French. S sorry, it's Ricky Keats. There, there's okay. a couple of French players that I've played in Blitz and Bullet over the years. This is not him. Uh, this is Ricky Keats. Ricky Keats. That's a <laughs> that's a lot of fun to say. Okay, I'm joining you at that game against Doctor Burger Burger. One of okay, I'm gonna try not to break my mic again, but his. Uh... I think you might have actually broken your mic. You you suddenly decreased tremendously in volume. So. <laughs> Burger, burger! Oh, Mike is like, oh, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Um, I have to work on that. No, I just need a mic that can handle me. It's not me, it's the mic. All right. So, this is a, this is an E4, E5 with a G6. How, how, how rare is this? We've got E4, E5 on the board, a four knights, and then, and then G6 by Lagarde. So, yep. and a gambit by White. So, not even taking back knight D5. Bishop g5, the direct attack on the queen. This almost looks like amateur level chess. Like, you know, I'm going to put the bishop on g5 and maybe my opponent is not going to see that the queen is hanging kind of thing. Right. My, my students are masters at this. <laughs> um, How's that strategy working out? Knight c7. I mean, they're all still in the triple digits of rating, so I think that... Uh, I think it's not, it's not working out that well. So knight takes d4. And... Uh, See, this is the problem with playing offbeat openings, but playing an even more offbeat response to an offbeat opening. It's that you didn't punish Black for this G6 move, and well, I would say that Black is very comfortable now. I mean, right. So, very Bishop actively five, placed. Bishop G3. Okay, let me just check at your analysis board to see where you're at. Oh, on the regular board. Okay. So, Black is definitely not going to castle on the king side here, right? Or maybe he, he's not too rare. I don't know. I, if I were black, I wouldn't want to castle there, especially since white still has a light squared bishop. If it gets to d3, that long diagonal pointing to h7 looks a little intimidating. Oh, I'm wrong. He castled anyway. He doesn't care. Okay. That's what I was going to say. I mean, it's good in chess to have options. Generally, uh, generally when, you know, calculating forcing variations, I always say, uh, and, and that, now you can quote me on this, because, you know, I, I said this, not Aaron Nimsevich. Um, you, uh, you always say you want to give your opponent the least amount of options possible. And so on the board in front of us, uh, black has m myriad of options, right? This is a vocab right. word for everybody. It's an SAT nice. vocab. So it is an SAT vocab. So white has dropped the knight back to B3 here and kind of says, you know what? I kind of admit <clears throat> I don't have a particularly wonderful position. Uh, so I'm going to offer a queen trade. And if you take, then fine. The position is of a symmetrical nature. We both have six pawns, and they're completely identical. Mm -hmm. And, well, let the best knights and bishops and rooks win. Right. The problem is that when you're playing a very good player, equal material and equal pawn structure don't really feel that equal all the time. So Right. Um, and the fact that white is offering a queen trade here just shows that black's king isn't as weak as we thought it was. He's still going for the attack, so black just played a5, <laughs> taking black advantage is, of the fact that white yeah. hasn't castled yet. White's fastest castle would be on the queen side, but if he does that now, he's at risk of getting attacked. If white takes the queen on d5, black puts his knight on d5 by recapturing, and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden... Black is more active ahead in development, and his pieces are ready to attack. He doesn't need a queen to attack. He's going to do it anyway. I think a5 is a very adept move because he he kind of recognizes that white is a couple of moves away from castling kingside with, you know, developing the bishop and and uh, and going short castle. But if white was to just go long here with, with uh, you know, this this kind of style of play, that a5, a4 is, is obviously, it's on the cards. And, you know, for anybody watching, this is a very common positional idea. Anytime there's a knight on b3, g3, g6, or b6, these are kind of the four important squares for this positional nuance, the, the, the counter pawn launch is really important. So if there's a knight on b6, you would play a4, a5. Mm -hmm. There's a knight on b3, you would play a5, a4. And white can't play a4 and match you, because you would hang a knight. Right. So that's a little bit of that. Um, in the meantime, yeah, well, we have no decisive results except Marseille. Marseille... Scoring two points very quickly against Ljubljana. Right. Um, wow, Makes MVL's... Uh, yeah. I was just going to say, MVL's just sitting there, sitting pretty for like 15, 20 minutes, probably answering questions. Hey, MVL, what's your favorite smoothie? My favorite smoothie is the strawberry swindle. Um, 
you know, like just, hey, MVL, what's your favorite resort destination? Oh, I like to go places, you know, where uh, I can uh, be cheap and, uh, you know, get some, get some, uh, s swindle some good flight deals, potentially. Oh, uh, damn. So, no, no, no. It's, you're you're it, both roasting and complimenting him at the same time. I yes, love it. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's very like, wholesome. Yeah, like, a, like, you know, I mean, I have to give him tremendous credit for the way he handled that terrible position. Right. But why did he get into that terrible position, as Greg Shahadi was saying? What was Rook B3? Right. So... Oh, interesting. I'm trying to find some upsets on board four versus mm -hmm. board one. It looks like the game between Grandmaster George Meyer and FM Hazel Lopez from the Amsterdam Mosquitoes looks pretty dryish. This would be a good result for their for their first game. But it's, it's your, not too interesting. What are the usernames? The usernames are Taro del Caribe ninety four and George Meyer. Ah yes, yes yeah yeah okay they were they were at the very very bottom of the uh, of the screen for me they relegated right. Gerg Meyer to the absolute bottommost portion of my screen because they were like yeah the games are gonna make you fall asleep my guy oh but forget I said that it, the game between oh uh, she just blundered Luke no she didn't Luca Lenich and Stefan he blundered Stefan Regoli Luca Lenich yeah Luca Lenich from Ljubljana Turtles it's a very drawish game but Stefan only has. 10 seconds oh now it's a now it's uh, gonna be a draw that's oh. an upset that's an upset okay having luca lenich uh, is the is the but what uh, the usernames are important oh, you're right i'm sorry it was uh, my, my, my michelangelo Emily okay michelangelo. yes 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 because because uh on screen for all the viewers there's this beautiful algorithm that for all the viewers has the full names but when right. we might be looking through some of the games on our on our portion of uh, broadcast. Yeah. Wow, this I, I was apologize. crazy. I'll tell you the username next time. This was crazy. Wow. Uh, this was a king hunt. Yeah, it was. Um, that's that's a good result for Marseille. Marseille. Black almost like was on a quest to checkmate himself. It, it seems like. Yeah, but, I know. Uh, I, that's why I was looking for a second, and I thought he almost lost. <laughs> but no, no, it was a draw. So yeah, I mean, all is was... well in the world. Not wow. every fourth board is gonna mess up a draw. Um, wow, but that means another result goes in Marseille's favor. Marseille yeah. with a very, very strong, uh, very strong first round here. Uh, does anybody know what flag Lopez has? Uh, uh, I think mm -hmm. chat might know. I, I'm not super familiar uh let's see can we find a game that's potentially entering time trouble yes. yeah, how about this game between uh miguel admiral and dimitri collars baden baden amsterdam mosquitoes matchup uh and again everybody the, the game in the bottom right is from the Khan blitz streams versus the berlin bears it's a creek core game with this format we are able to tune into certain games and analyze them very easily so okay wow this is a this is a crazy position alexandra Yep, just got to this position. Wow. So what is going on here? This is very unclear. So black has two rooks for the queen, a knight for the rook, and also two extra pawns. So a knight and two pawns for the rook. It's somehow the no, most uneven position, yeah. but the pieces are very different. So, it generally, in, in positions of material imbalance, in particular queen versus rook and knight, rook and bishop, I mean, it's extremely important to have piece coordination, which sounds logical. I mean, if you have three pieces and they have two, you obviously want to outplay them, but my favorite thing to do was to watch training games. Well, this is not a favorite thing to do, no. My favorite thing to do is to probably play Hyper Bullet and eat goldfish. But my second favorite thing to do... Uh, is, uh, is is looking at computer games play material imbalance. And okay. they're so clever with how they sacrifice at a timely moment. For instance, in the position that was just on the board, white played king h2. If you just go for a king hunt here with a move like rook b8, and you're just going for rook h8 mate, very brute force, rook b8, rook h8, and that, you know, that's it. I believe that... Black wins in stunning fashion with the move rookie one check, king h2, knight f3. Right. That's a very nice puzzle rush you're just and pointing out Yes, there. this would be like puzzle 27 maybe. Yeah. Puzzle rush. And the point is that if you go king h1, I mate you on g1, excuse me, h1, 
And if takes, then there's this nice move, rook 6e2. And the queen has to come back and block, because if the king goes to h3, there is the same checkmate. Um, and yeah, they're not real goldfish, everybody, don't worry. And if and if uh, queen comes back, you go takes, takes, give a check, take the a2 pawn. Uh, or you potentially take one of the other pawns, like maybe c4 or, or f3. But the point is that you cannot go brute force. You have to be very methodical, so he plays king h2 and rook e2 is mm -hmm. coming. I don't know, Alexandra. With two minutes on the clock, who would you play here? Would you rather play white or black? That's a good question. I think here I would take white. I think the position is complicated, and just having an extra minute on the clock would be much more comfortable for myself. What about you? I gotta go with the queen. You gotta go. Or with you know, the we're queen. doing this okay. ESP. We're doing this sports show style. You make a very logical point that I can't refute, but I take the other side anyway. Um, I think the point is that white Wait, can always... you said you would take the queen, right? Yeah, I would take... I would No, I would take white, and you would take black, yeah. So... No, I said I would take white, because white has two minutes. Never mind, then I would take side. black, Alexandra. Same side, I... but for a different... Okay, you take black, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. Uh, Please is be it contrarian. Not? That's, that's, that's totally what I... I would take black just because you have this really nice knight f3 idea that he's trying to set up. But I think white can always bail with a draw. Right. With queen g7, queen f7, queen h7. One, you know, one of the two. Um... I think it's blasphemous that white has this extra queen but can't deliver a win. Um, That's true. This is so, pretty uncommon. Uh, as we look around, so it, it seems as though Amsterdam has scored their first point. Marseille has won two and a half, one and a half, but Marseille has, uh, excuse me, Amsterdam has scored their first point of the match mm -hmm. uh, in the game that Ina Agres was playing. She is the board four, I believe, for Baden Baden, and Water Spielman, who is on board one for. Uh, for Amsterdam scores a win, which makes a lot of sense. Right. Um, you know the board ones have been have been quite quite consistent with 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 their victories. Uh, how about Hammer? Why don't we tune into Hammer? This is this is a this is a pretty big marquee matchup in and Hammer of itself. Hammer and uh, Stewie Griffin. Yeah. Let's yeah, do because it. Th these guys. This is Jose Herrera. He's the board four of the Bar Barcelona Raptors. Mm -hmm. uh, Hammer and Stewie Griffin have probably played like a hundred times. In fact. I'm going to go check how many times they've played. For sure. Um, and, and while you check, I'll take a quick look at the game. So if you guys recall, uh, FM Jose Herrera has not had the best start to Protest League. He's actually won zero games out of four. And, well, I was going to say maybe things are going to start looking better for him this game, but it seems like Black has a pretty scary attack here. His bishop, rook, and queen are all pointing towards h3. In fact, there's no way to protect that pawn. Uh, if he pushes h4, g3 is also hanging. Okay, so he had to sacrifice here. Got it. So, yeah, unfortunately, I, I'm not, I'm simply running out of browsers in terms of uh, the analysis board and this board to my right and, and, and the Zoom call and everything. So uh, I wasn't able to find an exact number. If somebody in the chat wants to go look this up and, and you know, be, be a, an amazing member of the community as you and Ludwig is looking to deliver checkmate, I'm sure these guys have played over 50 times. So, yeah, because they both play in Arena Kings as they well, play in right? Arena Kings. I'm mm -hmm. sure they've played in the Blitz pool. Uh, I don't know, maybe in on anonymous accounts that that Ewan is t testing openings on. But <laughs> with this position for for Hammer, he's he's very very comfortable here. Uh, I, I would say comfortable is an understatement. Up in exchange, yeah, with really no compensation. How did this happen? Let's backtrack a bit. Uh, it was a King's Indian attack by White, but Hammer. But White played a very odd King's Indian attack, not really coordinating his pieces too well. Hammer locked up the center and just launched an attack with h5. Mm -hmm. And, uh... So... 68 games since 2009. So, there is your number. And, uh, Cashbank, do you also have the score between them? I'd be curious to see that. Well, it's obviously in Hammer's favor. I mean, he's the Grandmaster, but... how but... much in Hammer's favor, right? Yeah, because... Ooh, by the way, if we look at the analysis board now, it seems as though Miguel Admiral is uh, going to score an upset win over Dimitri Kolars. Uh, I'm going to pull this up on the big screen. Okay. It, it's not looking pretty. I mean, White is looking to bail with Perpet here. Oh, they drew! He they repeated! Drew. Oh, but it, I mean, like, this is, this is like, I mean... Yeah, Black... Queen takes G2 is winning. Yeah, Queen takes, well, the Queen takes G2 is winning. Wait, never mind. Queen takes G2. That's just a free rook. I can't believe it. They both very comp con confidently uh, made this repetition, but... 
Queen takes g2 is just a full rook. Oh, that's 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 absolutely ridiculous. What? <laughs> oh, he probably for he probably thought he was repeating it just twice to try to get extra time. I have no other explanation for why he didn't take on g2. I mean, that's Ooh. Wow. I mean, it's just the pin. I mean, and and to so confidently repeat the moves three times. <laughs> yeah. Alexandra, I don't know. I'm not I'm not ready to to bail and just say they were in a low time situation. I mean, 10 seconds is you can take two pieces in this position. You can take the rook on e6, and you can take the rook on g2. Levy accepts no excuses for missed tactics in one. Wow. I, I respect that. I respect that, Levy. Okay. I got to pull up a different game and get this out of here. How is Riki Keats doing? Wow. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Let's go back to the Lagarde game. That's Riki okay. Keats and Burger Burger. Uh, okay. Alexandra, that king never made it out of the center. <laughs> Oh, yep, yeah, I just came back. I was like, I thought you were going to be on B1 or somewhere by now. The king is still on E1, and black has made a ton of progress. Oh, man. This is pretty terrifying for this white. This is... Yeah, so Freeding he's... Freeding queens now, but after knight takes... Knight okay. takes D5. He has to block the check, bishop E2. It's the only way to do it. Um, can you sack on C3 after taking the bishop, or is that just... Ooh. Silly. So Alexandra is suggesting that after bishop e2, knight e2, you've got bishop c3 potentially. Mm -hmm. Takes, takes, rook d2. That yeah. would be the defensive measure. Is there is there a reason to enter this? There's probably not a reason. I guess I get a little too excited about sacrificing. Well, you know what would be cool? Ah, uh, no, unfortunately. Well, no, no, no. If the, if the, if there was a king, like up, uh, and like you know a rook. Yeah, but the thing is that. Black doesn't so have of... to do this. He's yeah, in a good position. So yeah, he that's kind of go exactly. That's that's the easiest way to describe it. Mm -hmm. um, is that he just there is no need. He doesn't actually have to do this. So right. Um, he could simply just double his rooks on the e file instead after taking on e two if he wants. Yeah, the knight on d five is very nice. Yeah. So somebody in chat and Alexandra and we're all kind of saying, what if you just play this slowly? Like you take on e two. First of all, you don't even have to take on e two. But you might want to because white can play f3 potentially. Right. But that even, that's what I was worried about. Even that is weakening because the e3 square is wide open. The black knight can come to e3. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's put it. This one. This one's. Yeah. I mean, if I, I trust Lagarde will win this. We've had some other decisive results. Whoa, George Meyer just won his game against uh, FM Lopez, even though they were in a pretty draw drawish position earlier on. So oh, George nice. Meyer is very good at end games. That GM technique, even when you're grinding out a position that should be equal. So I guess I shouldn't be too surprised at that result. Wow. Okay. So he was just up. He was. I mean, position was completely equal in a time scramble. Yep. Uh, okay. At least material wise. But Gerg used the knight to his advantage. Offered a queen trade. White didn't take the queen trade, which is really peculiar. And black overwhelmed and planted a knight kind of straight in his face. He offered another queen trade. I'm, I'm so confused. Georg Meyer was offering his opponent several queen trades. And the, the guy didn't... What? I'm going to let you explain this. Because I try to explain the, the techniques I haven't understood. And it's I'm struggling, you know? No, but I mean, like, if you need to bail in an endgame, wouldn't you trade the queens? Right. I this guess seems... he, he was worried because it's a little tricky to defend against a knight and two pawns. Uh, so Mr. Sabon is saying knight wins here over bishop. I wouldn't say it wins. Uh, but the second the next games have started of Ljubljana, that's why it popped up on my screen, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we were taking a look at that final game. Uh, there's a few games, of course, you know, and, and this is a staggered match format. So we have some games that are still in the first round. Like there's no decisive results in the, in the, you know, the two matchups at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, we can take a look at the openings of these games right now. Okay. Uh, also, Hammer just won his game. We looked at it; it looked like he was completely yeah, that was, winning. That, that was very much. Uh, <laughs> this was. I like this, guys. It's so much fun. I didn't know Harry Potter did chess commentary too. Yeah, sometimes I leave my room under the under the uh, staircase and. Uh, oh, I thought you were streaming from the staircase. Uh, Alexandra, I'm allowed to lie to the audience without you upending my entire. You're existence. right. I'm so sorry. He got his own room, guys. Clap. Yeah. I so how about we go to this game? This is uh, Larso. This is Lars Oscar Haug. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, against Alvar Alonso Rosell. That's the matchup. Larso versus I won you. 
I don't know if that's I want you or I won you or I just I want you. I don't know if want you is something. Um, I'll take I'll take your interpretation of it. Okay, I'm coming to that game as well. Um, because there's only one minute and a bit on the clock, so we like to look at these time imbalances. What is with also, these kings in the middle? Yeah, I know that you have to learn the rules before you can break them, but we're seeing a little bit too of too many kings that yeah, don't like just, the castle in these top level games. It's 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 just, it's just so strange to me. I, I mean, I completely don't understand. Um, I'm gonna pull this one up on our on our analysis board just because. <laughs> Friends, wh why why is no one castling? We're trying to do an instructional chess broadcast, and right. you're all you're you've got a king on e two. Look, let's go back in the opening. What 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 happened here? I'm gonna look at the small board. This was a London. This was an opening. Okay, with a knight c three London. Oh, g four was. You played like on the five. London? Yeah, you but I don't like her. this. I mean, what is this? <laughs> if Levy doesn't like this, he's the London pro. So why don't you like this London? Well, I'm not quite a London pro. Uh, I mean, I play it every now and then. I'm more of a trump. I like to move the bishop one square further than g5. Um, but yeah, okay, wait, no, he hold on, Alexandra White castled in this game. Oh, so it wasn't his choice, okay. No, but he no, but he castled and then he walked his king to e2. Yeah, I, I'm looking at that as well now. Um, he was just afraid because of the open g file, but it's still pretty suspicious here. No, but like, here's the thing. Why would you commit to a vacation on the king side and then come back home to e2 where it's snowy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> That's, you're asking the right questions here in a very cute way. He went to, to he went home too soon from his vacation here. It wasn't a comfortable vacation. That's why he he thought there was gonna be a war breaking out or something. He was just a tourist. He's like, better run home. That's uh, a but, very dark way of thinking about it, but I suppose that would be... I mean, I've heard people go to the airport and realize they never renewed their passport, but a war breaking out in the region you're going to? Okay, that works. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, there was a travel warning from the USA. Okay, I'm going to stop with these examples. I think after Rook takes c5, Black is just... Yeah, this is, this, is, this, is, this is quite bad, I would say. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, how about, how about Sherman Tross versus Johann Salomon? This is... Uh, Ippolito Assis Gargatagli. I love that name, by the way. That is. I can't. I, mean, I can't tell if you're reading a username or gibberish. <laughs> oh, it's 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 Sherman Tros and Johann Solomon. That's the game. Okay. I'm, I'm taking I'm taking a look at now. Pulling it up. I've got a whole got giant list of games. Here we go. Uh, Ippolito is nine minutes versus one. So this got is it. very good. I can good. read his name now. Okay. Yeah. So. You just said it very fast. So I wasn't able to catch up. I hope I pronounced it right. I mean, I. I I, I love his name. I you know I, and his opponent is uh, is the guy that Hikaru very famously on stream declared as Johann Sebastian Bach, I believe. Why did he call him that? I think he I, he either misspoke or was making a joke, but in either way, uh, and, in, and, and, in... <laughs> it was funny. He was like, yeah. "I just beat Bach," and everybody was like, "Ha ha! You're so funny! You beat my, <laughs> you beat musician! Ha ha!" Oh my so, gosh! Well, Hippolito so... Asis... sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, so this end game, we have to, obviously, it's going to be hard to win for either side. White has a knight, which tends to be trickier. He also has a, a pass pawn that's mm -hmm. isolated on g3. But his pawns are on the dark squares, which is important because it means that the dark squared bishop is going to be able to attack them later on. What side would you prefer to play here? Uh, since we're getting into bullet territory, I'm gonna go with knight. Knight is a bit more tricky here, but black doesn't seem particularly phased. I mean, he's playing this very nice pawn sacrificing move. So as you mentioned, uh, because white has a bunch of dark squared pawns, they're gonna be targets for, uh, for black's bishop. Uh, and I'm gonna add on to that. Sometimes you can have, like, six dark squared pawns, and they very conveniently shut down the enemy bishop. Right. But in this case... It's not C the case. Yeah, c5 is a very good move, undermining b4, and... Mm -hmm. I, I think black should be able to hold and you know in in a dream situation he could win the a5 pawn oops that's not how bishops move win the a5 pawn and create an outside passer his own outside passer which would be right so now now the question is do you play knight c5 or knight d8 right, right. which way which way do you commit knight c5 knight should c5, be five he's gonna take pawn takes it should be okay for white 
if he trades off the knight here. This is a very um, perplexing endgame because the white pawn on g3, everybody, is going to be a distraction for the black king. White doesn't even have to push it. He could just maybe leave push it, there, it once. Yeah. Yep. And the thing is that if white tries to play d4 saying, hey, please take me, so I'll come and take both pawns. Now, d4, you're going to get an e4 as a response, and it's a protected past pawn now, and you can no mm -hmm. longer move your king anywhere. So, um, so let's see what actually ends up happening. So we have bishop d6. White has seven minutes, though, so... White so cannot. he'll find the right variation. Yeah. And plays knight c5. Okay, so he, okay. so. And black doesn't even take. Black just plays. Black um, just plays king f7. So white has the option of taking on b7, but he doesn't want to lose the b4 pawn, especially because then a5 is going to be a weakness until the end of time. Um, and and black... the, actually, the knight the knight can get trapped. It's yeah. kind of funny if you play knight b7, bishop b4, you can get your knight trapped in the corner. Right. Um. Yikes. In the meantime, uh, the first matchup between Cannes and, uh, and Berlin ended with a 2-2 tie, so uh, I want to say, I wanna say how European, just, you know, nice, nice and calm start to, to the matches. That's um, fair. This is not like the Atlantic Division, where St. Louis wins three and a half half out of the gate or something. Uh, last, last round, uh, I think, Belisi won their first game three and a half half, which was... Uh, like astounding and they almost they could have won 4-0 their board four almost delivered mate with rook and bishop but then he missed it and then robert Hess like almost melted on, on camera. Um, i mean under understandable um well actually if you remember my prediction i said that even though the barcelona raptors have been leading the pack so far this mm -hmm. might be the match where they're not doing as well and so far that prediction is holding up but it's still too early so yeah, we'll so see. far so far it's 1-0 but uh because the last game we looked at also looks like it should be a tie and even though black grandmaster johan salomon is a grandmaster he's actually the lower rated player of the two. Oh, interesting that's yeah. that's so he would be so he's the he's not board two he's uh or is he board two um i think he's let, oh. let me just tell you so that I don't tell you what I think. I'll tell you what the fact. No, is. he is bored too. Actually, he is He's bored too okay. because uh, Lars, Oscar, uh, I guess Haug. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Again, yeah. uh, Larso. Larso is bored three, and Seba Sebastian Mikhailov is mm -hmm. bored four for the Norway gnomes. Yeah. So this um, is a bored two versus bored two. Um, it's just that they stacked their top top board with hammers. So. Still a good result for him to get a draw. Listen, anytime you can put hammer on board one, I would I would go for it. I think he's a <laughs> I think he's a really reliable player. I think he's stable. I think and and the draw agreed uh, in this matchup. So why okay. don't we go back to uh why don't we go back to 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 Marseille? See how right. see how maybe maybe MVL Lion Beast how he's Lion how he's Beast of up. course we have to check out how he's doing how he's calmly beating up his opponents. Up a pawn with white, up three minutes, looks good. Yeah, looks good. I don't think we need to go looks... much further into this one. Yeah, this was a French, a classical French uh, burn variation, it looks like, according to, 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 my, to my calculations. With this G takes F6, wow, and MVL plays G3. This is the thing. Uh, when you see really strong players play variations that you don't really know that well, you you got you gotta you gotta go look at them. I'm I'm after this match gonna check out G3 in the G takes F6 classical okay. variation. Yeah, if um, you guys are trying to figure out what to play against the French, especially in in rapid games, then this is a game to look at and see if the variation suits your style. Alexander, I'm really confused by something. Uh, so it looks like Black just sacrificed the pawn. Actually, if we back up in the MVL game, literally a, a couple moves before we got there. Uh, Black played a4, and MVL just swapped on d8 and took the pawn and said, okay, do your worst. Right. So it seems like Black thinks that he can hold a draw here, and MVL is saying, no, you you don't know who you're playing. Have you not seen me pull off every single endgame I play? Yeah. So oh. I, I think I think this 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 sacrifice with a4, just if everybody's confused, I mean, you know, we're looking at this going, why, why did Black blunder this pawn i mean it seems very trivial you swap on d8 everything and then you take on a4 mm -hmm. i think it's the fact that uh black is of course okay with the draw and black understands that in a queen end game with a weak back rank and a king hiding out in g7 the draw is a likely result i mean white will mm -hmm. play queen e7 and give some sort of perpetual check right and so black is saying take my pawn 
But now I have the active queen, and I'm gonna right. swoop in down here and potentially take, 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 take. Uh, I, I'm actually quite certain that he did not blunder that. And if he did, well, I mean, I don't know how he blundered that, but... Yeah, I don't think it was a blunder. It seems a little bit too, you know, too beneficial of a blunder. Like, oh, you know, one of those coffee house tricks. Oh, man, I can't right. believe I blundered that pawn. Right. And and or... Black is also... He has the option of queen h1. I don't know if it makes sense to move his queen there and lose the center attack, but he could get back a pawn if he needed to. And if his queen would be on h2 after, he'd be attacking the base pawn on g3, which protects the rest of the chain. And it could make things a little more challenging for white if he has to defend the g3 pawn. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's, it's, it's a complex endgame, but MVL is going to continuously make every move in five seconds and, uh, <laughs> and, and yeah. put all, you know... Put, With a strawberry swindle ice cream, right? Yeah, uh, smoothie, but yeah, strawberry smoothie. swindle smoothie. The, the alliteration is really strong. Yeah, I thought um, I needed to add an S in there. There is one final game remaining in the match between Norway and Barcelona. One uh, and a half to one and a half, okay. I, did it actually just end? No, I don't not think yet. so. Uh, is it is it this game? No, it is not this game. It, it might have just concluded. But it's, uh, is it Baby Legs? It is Baby... No, <laughs> I got too excited. Uh, I thought it was Baby Legs. Oh, it's um Captain Casanova against D. Forsen. Yes, 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 yes. I, I completely uh, yes. Daniel Forsen is uh, he actually streams? I believe he has a channel. He streams in uh, either Spanish or Italian or both. Or I'm completely wrong. I thought but... he I thought he does in Russian. O okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he actually also streams in uh, in Arabic and uh, Mandarin and Japanese and um. Oh. So chat is blowing up. Yeah, this is this is this is a meme right here that his oh, name okay. is spelled Forsen. So, I guess uh, I, I'm off. I saw someone with a similar username to him that was in Russian, but maybe it's Forsen. The meme is strong. Let's move on. Yeah. So, speaking of Forsen, though, uh, Daniel Forsen, everybody. Daniel Forsen, not Sebastian. Everybody calm down. Um, he, uh, this is this is a crazy position, Alex. I'm, I'm going to pull this up on the analysis board. Uh, the game between Captain Casanova. Great name, by the way. Captain yeah, Casanova. That is. Um, so, black down a pawn, but just launching this for okay. Well, I mean, it looks like black is better because his pawn is on d two. Um, I don't know if it matters that he's down a pawn here, but he also has twenty seconds to forty. Interesting. The so queen a six now is the move. Mm -hmm. And the threat is... Oh, wait, no, I think that just wins. I think he's winning because there's two threats, queen a3 and taking right. the rook. Right. Yep. I just, this I is... just looked at the Wait, what happens after king b2? Okay, queen takes f1, queen yeah, takes d1. Right, it's still losing. Yeah, so everybody, this is, this, is, this is a good instructional moment, right? So now white just, you know, takes the pawn, but... Um... This queen a6 move is really instructional because it looks as though it's not attacking anything, but whenever you have a pawn and a rook behind it, you're always threatening to distract the defender of the back rank away from the promotion square. Right. And so queen a6, queen f1 is the big idea here, and there's just nothing that white can do. White tries to give the bishop and now is pushing some pawns, but uh, yeah, that's... Uh... I think that's 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 going to be game and this knight on g6. Well, you know, if there's still some chances here. At the end of the day, they have very little time. So that's true. Queen um, one, queen h4. Queen e1. Ah, he did. Yes, yes, yes. He could have yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Now that more pieces are being traded, um I think this is this is a, a very bold decision from black kind of saying my G pawn is going to promote and your pawns together everybody at this point at this point in the end game these pawns are not just worth a point black is not really right. up two points black is up right. I'm not even sure black is up I mean look at this now I'm now the the, the two chain pawns black is going to need to sacrifice his knight for one of them or now there's b7 he can just drop his rook and play b7 or h7 I guess either work Wow, and he's he's sacrificed, and the the, the he's pro and oh, the five just takes, just takes. Sebastian Whoa. Mihailov totally collapsing his nerves. 
Why wasn't Rook takes B6 played? Rook takes B6 check. And, 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 and wait. And, wow. And he just that... resigns. I mean, he could have played Rook takes B6. What oh, excuse me. I, I, I'm sorry. I said Sebastian Mihailov's nerves were collapsing. I meant Daniel Forsen. It, it yeah, gets a little bit crazy here. I it, it, it's just, it's crazy with all these full names and, and, and wow. And RIP to Forsen. Uh, so we just had the Norway Gnomes board four take down the Barcelona Raptors board one. What wow. A what a result. Captain Casanova. Oh. Unbelievable. I mean... Yeah, I guess Daniel just just panicked. I mean, he went from being up a piece, Queen A6. Uh, Queen A6 is just... I wouldn't be surprised if the move Queen A6 from an evaluation perspective is like minus five. I mean, it's just, it's completely winning. Completely, completely winning. Wow. That's unfortunate. So, we can get some uh, some Fs in the chat for Daniel Forsen. Uh, Alexandra, what, what, what should we move on to here? I mean, we have... We already have a decisive result, by the way. Michelangelo, okay. Michelangelo, uh, just lost. No, he uh, just won. yeah, he, he defeated, uh, Alban Delorme, I think this is the board four of, uh, okay. maybe we should take a look at the game between Grandmaster George Meyer and International Master Let's Quentin Ducarmon. Let's do it. I, 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 this is one of these positions where Gerg, uh, so chat, you know, you, you, you get this position in front of you. How quickly are you know can commentators make decisions about the position? Well, first thing we look at is always you know material, uh, material and king safety. These are the, these are the top two. Uh, both kings are standing on symmetrical squares, completely safe, surrounded by a wall of pawns that are actually also completely symmetrical, right? Mm -hmm. So the same exact pawn structure. What's the material? Uh, black has two minor pieces that are knights for a bishop, knights and a bishop. White has two bishops. Right. What do bishops like? Bishops. You know, I'm gonna get really philosophical here. Bishops are like cows. They like open space. They like to roam. They like to see the end of the field so they can take it. Or is it better to say bishops are like horses? Anyway, no, no. continue with the cow metaphor. B bishops are like Simply. cows, everybody. Levy Rosman, uh, New York City, 2019. Very artistic comment. This bishop I mean, only won. Live in New York, you get artsy after a while. I understand. Yeah, I don't have any cows here, so I don't know what kind of reference. Oh, we do have horses though. Um, so. This bishop on e1 is doing one thing and one thing only, and that's defending this diagonal. This bishop is not a happy camper. And ni neither is the bishop on f3. What's he looking at? Right. He's, got a giant, he's got a knight standing here. Yep. This is very textbook example of when you prefer knights over bishops. Close, close position, strong knight on e4. I have to prefer black over here. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a very very tough position to play. Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna say like for both players and in a, in it. But the good thing is, and this is this is what what it comes down to in terms of match situation. Everybody, do remember the Pro Chess League is a team of four players. So the longer your game can go theoretically in an equal position, the better. The less risk you take, and this way your teammates who are observing your game can make decisions like. Do I go for a risky attack here? Like, what is the board situation? If you immediately start, you know, sacrificing and going for an attack, well, you up your risk, which is the, not the right thing to do in these kinds of matches. Um, have you played... Uh, is there an amateur team West or amateur team Central or something like this? Like, we have amateur team we East, We have amateur right? team West, yeah. Have you ever played there? I've played um, there with, with uh, my university team. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I've played Amateur East maybe four or five times in my life, and I mean, that's obviously much lower stakes, and there's no prize money, and there's no traveling, you know, to San Francisco, and, uh, but, uh, same kind of thing, like, you want to look over at your teammate's game and go, hmm, I can make decisions on my game based right. on, based on their board, not, what are they doing? Why are they down two pieces? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly, um, so. you know, it's, it's very nerve-wracking when when you have to base your play based on how your teammates are doing. And I've had that happen. I've, I've also played in the, in three Olympiads. So that was a lot of pressure and you I hated being Olympiads. the last person. Oh, the last person. Okay. So you should oh. just, you know, just quickly win and, and get on out of there. Yeah, exactly. Just, just, just win quick and let your, your teammates just feel a little happier. So some, uh, 
No, so far nothing. In, so far, you know, if we just if we're just looking at uh at decisive results, nothing. We're we're deep deep in uh, deep in game number two here, and okay. just um, gonna show everybody the full scoreboard. Who are our four matchups today? In case you're not familiar with the logos, we have. I think close to five thousand viewers last I checked. So thank you everybody for for joining us. Whether you know you're a you're a follower, you're you're kind of a, a lurker, a chatter, watching off the watching off Twitch front page potentially. Uh, you guys can come say hi. Don't be afraid. And I think we are going to get a decisive game soon. By the way, in the Louisiana okay. Turtle and Marseille Migraine matchup, which is tied right now. So that's super exciting. Okay. And um, we which which game are we looking at? This is at the there? game between Raphael and my El Evely, which is. Uh, Stefan Regoli from the Marseille Migraines and right. Matej Shebenik from Ljubljana Turtles. Okay, and so you're you're. This yeah. is a claim that it will be decisive. Well, based I think on it what? looks like White is about to pull off some type of tactic because so many moves look good here. <laughs> I see. Okay, so let me let me uh, let me pull this up on the big screen for everybody and see. We have we have a lot of games to look at, and if everybody wants to follow the games, you totally can. Uh, you can turn on the engine eval bar if it's going to make it a bit easier for you. Obviously, we have a finite period of time here, um, like to look at every single game, and we don't right. want to, you know, we don't want to seem like kids in an arcade. Like, oh my god, look at this game! Wait, wait, look at this game! Oh, I have so many tickets. I want to look at this game and that game. Oh, that game ended. That's though. how I feel inside, but obviously, we try to control it for the audience. I just think that this game in particular. Was, is very instructive because it right. looks like White's almost winning, but he has to figure out the correct strategy and move order here. So sometimes winning a already winning position is one of the more difficult things you can do in a game. Make sure you don't let that win escape your hands like we've seen in the first game of the day today. And I have to I have to say, Greg makes a great point. I mean, we've been you know we've been live for for just over an hour, and no team has even three points yet. It's two and a half, yeah. two and a half. One and a half, two and a half, two, two, and two and a half. We have two tied matches, right? And one, one yeah. match and two matches separated by a point. So uh, keeping an eye on all the results here, it's, you know, it's a tall task. Uh, but yeah, th this one looks like Ljubljana is going to get, you know, a point here and take that mm -hmm. one point lead. Considering, though, that Marseille was up two and a half, half. Oh, and the queen is gone. Yeah. Well, so. that was a, a fast, instructive endgame. <laughs> instructive, sorry, position. And Matej just won. So, taking the lead for the Ljubljana Turtles, although he was a heavy favorite in this position. Sorry, in this matchup. And uh, the position, in, actually. In the position, in the matchup, in the world, in the in the whole match, in the league, on Chin Chess. Yeah, so the queen is gone, Bishop H6, very nice move. Uh, MVL actually drew. He drew that game. He drew? He drew that game. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. We should pull this up on the analysis board. Uh, so I have, this, I have this on the bottom yep. right. I'm going to load... A different Marseille migraine match here with uh, with Lagarde. Excuse but me, this is a different French game. Um, yeah, the MVL game, when we looked at it, MVL was up upon in this final position, White is up upon. So I'm curious what happened to get here. Yeah, how how exactly that uh, that all went down. And I'm pulling up a game on the screen, on the big screen for everybody. This is the final game of uh, the second round between Ljubljana and Marseille. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 4-3 at the moment, Ljubljana with the lead. And... That board four for Ljubljana is taking it to these French GMs, but she's having a tough time with the time management, I think. Right, right. So, wait, but Alexandra, isn't this just... Hang on, I'm, I'm catching up to this game. Uh, isn't she just winning? It looks like it, and I've only looked at it for half a second. Well, wait. this is this is really tough for, for White to suppress the pressure. Um, okay, so... Real quick on this small board, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had this message before. Oh, excuse, uh, apologies. Uh, we had this message before, like, no, it was a blunder. He totally blundered the pawn. But no, look, this is a, this is amazing. Black sacrificed the pawn very confidently against MVL and just kind of went for active play. And this is exactly what someone in chat mentioned. He mentioned the passed pawn on the queen side, but mm -hmm. this is, yeah, I mean, the active queen for black was a nightmare to deal with. Yeah. Uh, MVL couldn't move the queen off the third row because this pawn would fall and the H-pawn would promote. And, uh... Yeah, wow. Just, just, I mean, just a great game from Black. Very solid, plays the French. Slightly out-prepared and, and sacrifices a pawn for, uh... 
you know, for active play and gets a draw against them. It's terrific. It's great job. Yeah, this is a great start for the Ljubljana Turtles. 4-3, and they were not the favorites heading into this game. And they were in fear of getting in the top, in the bottom two once again. So nice to see this come back so far. Still early, yeah. though. Yeah, very nice. And, you know, we're pulling this, this game up on the screen. This is the final game between the two of them. And, and look, so this is what I thought was going to happen, that she was going to play Rook F3 and take... And now the question is, is there a perpetual? I think the king is going to run to d1. This is amazing. So check this out. Rook h3. Well, I can even move this. You give oh. a million checks. Oh, Alexandra, it's a draw. In this moment? No, she, no, she, she traded. traded. She just traded, but go no, ahead. No, she missed. Oh, she missed perpetual. Wait, wait, was there perpetual? Hold on a second. Maybe not. Maybe not. Because maybe the king can go to the first row. Maybe the king goes to the first row and you block with the D rook. Ah, that's what right. the trick was. That's what okay. the trick was. So she didn't miss it. She didn't miss it. It was just no perpetual there. That was a tough position. Yeah. Oh man, I another see. another rook end game for her. So you oh, know what gosh. she's gonna train after this match. Uh rook end games, obviously, which everybody should be doing. Yeah. I think the, the takeaway for me during most of these matches is study your end games. Yes. Study your end games. She must have okay. had some chances. This is a very, very instructive moment. Um, so C6, sacrificing the pawn and, you know, leaving again Laura with a very tough decision to make with 30 seconds on the clock. This is the another key. The thing is, first of all, does Grandmasters are... six. Does she take B3? Right. It's, you know, which way does she go? Does she give a check first? That's the other thing about Engam, not in this particular case, but you can, you know, you, you could give a check. So she takes there. Jules Mussard mm -hmm. is going to take there. Rook C2, check. I think was more accurate. I think Rook... Yeah, and, and so, you know, let me backtrack for, for everyone. So Rook C2 check, I think, is a bit more of an accurate move because it forces the king back to the first row. Uh, that's the thing about endgame. Sometimes the check is better. If you go up with the, with the king, I give you this check and I win your B3 pawn and I increase my drawing chances su substantially. So, friends, Rook endgames, look for the timely check. Right. Um, so what I guess her plan here is to try to take on h4 since she missed mm -hmm. the timely check earlier and pray for some type of perpetual with c2, c3, c1, which won't work because the black, the white king can just snake his king over closer and closer towards the rook. So is yeah, I, I think she's losing. Can unless... Jules take a five with check here? Yeah, here he can take. If you want, but then uh, but then she plays king g4 and at least she gets one pawn back. Yeah, with Jules, you just never know. Like, is he in time trouble or uh, excuse me, is he thinking or is he like is he suffering from poor in internet connection? <laughs> uh, well, I don't see any red red bar next to his name, so hopefully that's not right. So, don't know, but uh, he seems to be thinking. He does seem to have the situation under control. If Jules can win this, it's going to be four four. How exciting! Four four after uh, after two matchups, and it's only heating up. That's the good thing. When it's equal through two rounds, it means that uh, there has been some parity. Like uh, you know, the top players have yeah. defeated the, the weaker players, or vice versa. And then if there were upsets, that means there were counter upsets, right? So it's always it's always good. It's always good. So. Um, definitely. Let, let's see if there's any other games that are getting close to being decisive. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Um, what are we looking at? I, well, I think it's already winning for white, but I'm looking at the game between the usernames, just Mig and I Agrest, which is W I M Ina Agrest against international master Miguel Admiral. So Chad, if you remember the game, uh, and you know, on the bottom right here, we're going to see what happens between Jules Musard and, uh, Laura Unuk, she's the board mm -hmm. four for the Ljubljana Turtles. Uh, this this matchup is intriguing here, Miguel Admiral. We know he's capable of great things. He had that mm -hmm. game against Dimitri Kolars, right? That was his yep. uh, the game that he could have. I mean, he hung a rook, and then they took a draw. But uh... <laughs> but here it looks like he he has a crushing attack, um, and if he wins this, the Amsterdam mosquitoes will have three and a half to. Two and a half over the Baden Baden snowballs, which is good because uh, the mosquitoes just lost their their other board. They um, let's see, yeah, FM has a Lope, Lopez. Sorry, just lost against Grandmaster Daniel Fridman. Ah, uh, you mean uh, Terror del Caribe and Tormos? Yes, that's the matchup. Okay, got it. Yes, yes I, I do have this game as well. 
Um, yeah, but this, yeah, this position is this position between oh. Admiral and. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, fun fact. Uh, Rocky let us know in chat that MVL and Jules Moussard are actually roommates at Gibraltar Chess Festival. Oh, cool! And they're playing on the same team, so that's cute. Yes. Sorry, for a second I was like, they're playing at the same team in Gibraltar? That sounds mildly illegal. No, no, like, same team here, but geez, yes. I think you should play uh, Bishop G4. <laughs> like, what? You can't cheat? You can tell me moves during the game? Oh, so, no. L lucky for, for them, they're not cheating. Just on this yeah. team. But... Um, okay, so Daniel Fridman uh, playing for... Uh, Ber uh, which team you said? Um... Um, for he's playing for the uh, Baden Baden Snowballs. Yes, of course. Sorry, he's from Germany. I I have no idea why. Yeah, I Baden Baden, that Baden the spa town in Germany. Uh, so can I? <laughs> yes. No, actually, Chesbe... actually. No, no, no. I, I know, no. Chesbe made a. Oh. She, she's Chesbe said good good French accent. Can I have some snails now? Escargot. Have you ever had escargot? Uh, yeah, my dad tricked me. He told me they were mushrooms, and I said, Dad, I don't like these kinds of mushrooms, and uh, that was it. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Father's lying to get kids to uh, eat yeah, food. Yeah, I was uh, a young seven-year-old. My parents used to tell me that broccoli were, or were called Oreos. They conditioned me to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has their parent tricks. Yeah, but I've, I've never had escargot. Um, but French food is great. I love French food. Oh, Ever and had another a... result. George yes. Meyer and Quentin Ducarmon just drew. Uh, yeah, so Georg Meyer draws that game, which is honestly I'm not so the close. result. He that, that's not the result he wanted, mm -mm. right? So everybody, we we tuned into this game. Uh, again, on the here we have we have we're switching between analysis and the big screen. Um, so we, we checked in right around here, and we I kind of said that this was prospectless really for Georg Meyer. And I wasn't wrong. <laughs> right. No, I mean, you were definitely not wrong. Some sometimes it's good to be completely proven wrong by the players who just go, okay, commentators, they're very bad, they don't know anything. <laughs> um but in this case, black just kind of very seamlessly equalized and they traded knights and it was an obstacle which well they repeated moves basically and uh Yeah. Um and so Georg Meyer wasn't able to grind this one out. So very solid result there. And by the way, this match is level two, three three. Two, exactly. Three three, four, not three three, two three, four three. Everything is so close. I haven't seen a match this close yet. How about whoa? How about that end game? Jules Musard and Laura Unuk. Okay, let's take a look. Has uh and as just Mig wins this game, it seems as though no, I don't think it's gonna be a well, actually. Uh So, so what what are you excited about here? I there there was a moment of I, I got first of all I got really excited about the time situation. Um, I don't know if Jules Musard Jules Musard is scaring me. He might flag. I mean, he's we've seen flags before. White White is definitely winning, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe his internet gives out or something. Can we can we hope for a miracle? Oh so man, she, that would be pretty painful. Um, I mean, MVL good seems like he has okay internet, and aren't they rooming together? According to chat, this is suspicious. I th I think they're rooming together in Gibraltar. I think for now they might still be in. Uh, oh in, right, in, they're in probably not there yet. Okay, but look, no, he's, he's got he's got one red. He's got a red bar. He's got a red bar. Uh, Levy's hoping for that Wi-Fi flag. I see the red bar too. Um, I don't actually, know, chat. You guys see the red bar? It's a thing. Uh -oh. Chat, chat's like Levy's confused. Uh, the guy just lost thirty seconds. I think he knows his next move. Uh, uh, well, I'm oh, kind of excited. Yes, chat. I wasn't. I wasn't insinuating he would flag, but he, his internet's gone. <laughs> don't you, flag. Yeah, this is. Oh, Ch this chat. Is I. I. I oh, everyone's like, you don't know what you're talking about, guys. Yeah. Hey, Levy, we're we're backing you up. Um, he's, he's, oh, it's 30 let's seconds. Go, let's go, let's go. Wait, why am I hoping that he flags? That's so mean. I no, guess you're hoping that he flags because because Laura deserved the first game. Oh, and the internet's back. The internet's okay. back 20 seconds. Okay. Oh, it's down to one again. Okay, I think he's back. I think he's yep. back. Wow. Yep, this is just a win. That Almost. is, 
I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't resign here as Laura because the more moves you make, the more chances his internet goes. Don't flag. Just don't. Oh, she, okay. She resigned. She's respectful. I guess we can appreciate that in chat. Okay, fine. Good game. Wow. The games instantly start. MVL is already on the screen. Okay. Sorry guys. Well, you know, here's an interesting point. Uh, if Jules had like 50 seconds, he would have actually flagged, right? Because he lost a minute on the clock. So that's pretty crazy uh, that oh, he, he, he got a little bit lucky. Well, so. now we know why he's going to be playing fast the rest of the games. No, yeah. So I think that's literally why he's playing quickly. And yeah, yeah. meanwhile, playing E4, he's, uh, he's entered a dragon against uh, Mate Sebenik. And remember, uh, this, is our top tier, this is our top board matchup. I don't want to say top tier, but it's, it's kind of board one. And that means that wow, and the second match is also four four Alexandra. We well, this yeah, is I, exciting. I was just looking at that, at that as well. Um, the games between uh, Cannes Blitzstreams and Berlin mm -hmm. Bears are also coming to a close. Okay, let's uh, let's. All of them are in end games and they're in, in time pressure. So maybe we could take a look at one of those. Um, I've got Krikor up on one screen, and maybe the second analysis board will be used for another player. Yeah, Krikor's is definitely an interesting one um, because. Let's see. White. White has the bishop pair, but white's down a pawn here. So it's probably going to be. Whoa, whoa. Okay, Drosh. No, that wasn't a blunder. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, GM Krikor just opened a draw. Uh, offered a draw. We're good. Okay, so Krikor's offered a draw. That's that's an extra half point for Khan. Uh, and that means that they have uh, two games left. So let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's find those games. Yeah. Um, there's one between Baby Legs and Paul Velton. It's exactly, it's exactly what I've got in front of me. And there is a king on h4. This is why I love rapid chess, because, <laughs> I mean, this was a queen's gambit accepted. Just a, this is, an, this is a very calm opening. And somehow white decided that he was just going to take a, take a stroll. Take a stroll. G3, h4, and... Uh, well, what what is the balance of, of power? Oh, Queen H1 uh -oh. looks deadly. Uh -oh. Queen H1 forking. Okay. And uh, this looks like a point for Can, which means that Can will go to three and a half, three and a half. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a mate for Black mm. unless he brings in Bishop F5 his knight maybe? or his Bishop. Yep. Knight D4, maybe Knight D4. Don't even take C1. Just go straight for mate. That's Puzzle Rush style. Right, right, right. Um, use the Queen knight G2. to help. And Bishop F5, the dagger. Bishop f5 with the threat of queen g4. It doesn't look like you can stop it because queen e2 mm -hmm. is covered. Yep. The other threat is queen h2. Yep, bishop Very f5, nice. easy win. Mm -hmm. Easy win. Very nice. And look, and just, just to pull this up for everyone, uh, this is baby legs converting very, very nicely. Uh, the game has just concluded. Uh, why this was such a, such a methodical win, and I'll put a, another game up on the big screen for everybody. Uh, well, uh, with this game, they're going to be tied once again it's gonna be three and a half to three are all the games tied levy wow yeah yeah every single match is tied that's incredible um so here everybody the notice i mean the the reason i laughed about there being a king on h4 is the fact that but look at this position look at the bottom right of the board uh the analysis board completely disconnected i mean white's coordination here is miserable Mm -hmm. uh, the bishop on c1. First of all, did the bishop on c1 ever move? <laughs> Alexandra Botas, the white bishop, yes. was ca literally never moved. No, no, it did. Uh, you could see on move 26. Did what? Oh, oh it went... It went, it went back, though. It went back to e3. <laughs> it played bishop e3, bishop c1. It never took part in the game whatsoever and it's i mean okay like how can you play against the grandmaster and give peace odds <laughs> like this is uh, this is not the variant of chess we were looking for here ladies and gentlemen you know you want to learn one thing from each game develop your pieces <laughs> develop your pieces keep your king so, safe learn your end games okay that's it yeah meanwhile the Man of the Hour himself, who the team is named after Alexandra, Blitzstream, uh, is still playing. He's got Queen Rook, five pawns, versus Queen, Knight Bishop, four pawns. 
So material right. completely equal. Chat, would you rather take the bishop and the knight here, or would you rather have the rook and the two queenside passed pawns so you could just play a5, b4, a4, b3, a3, b2. I don't know how they're both making it, but, you know, somehow they both made it. <laughs> but um, you also have to accept that you have 30 seconds against three minutes. Yes. So, chat, would you rather play in Kevin Bordy's shoes or as Jonas Lampert? People saying bishop and knight. I, I Honestly, I agree. First of all, white also yeah. has a kingside attack. Yeah, he does. Um, no, rather I, have I, a bowl of snails. I definitely take white here. Wow, it's 4-4 up top, 4-4 in the second match. This match is 3.5, 3.5. I think, objectively speaking, white is better. I think white is pressuring, and the queenside attack is way slower. Than the um, kingside attack, yep. And here's a nice idea. F6, if G6, of course, to prevent checkmate, mm -hmm. then knight F5. I think here, F6, G6, knight F5 is, is crushing. Um, but maybe even knight H5. This is very bad. It looks like Berlin will go into round 3 up a point. Yeah, yeah. But that this doesn't look good. Knight h5. That's, it's not a good sign that White has so many moves that are killing here. Just shows how strong his attack is. Can he even consider Knight e4 and Knight f6? Well, I guess Knight h5, Knight f6 has the same idea. Mm -hmm. Um, really, the one thing that you're trying to disallow here, there's two ways to handle attacks. You can either deliver checkmate, uh, or you can use the distraction of the attack and win material. And so mm -hmm. now he's gonna try to hop into f6. And black, I mean, black is just uh, five seconds to choose which king move. It's okay, he chooses king g7. Bishop h6, puzzle rush maybe? Can you play bishop h6? You probably don't have to, but... You probably okay. have sim more simple ideas. Queen h4 but... just without bishop h6 maybe. Right, queen h4 is just going to put... Or queen, or queen g5. g5. Same queen idea. G5. Yeah. yeah. Two seconds. To, yeah, it looks like Kevin Bordy is just going to have to... He plays king f8, but it, it looks over... Mm -hmm. Queen h6, king e7, the king is on the run. Oh, knight d5. Uh, Very nice. And He's just going to take his queen and flag. And friends, there you go. There you go. You, you know, like I just said, the attack can use the, you know, you can use the attack to lure the pieces forward and then find a very nice tactic to win material. Great game there. Yep. So Berlin up four and a half. How about... Oh, we have a decisive game between FM Jose Herrera and Grandmaster Johan Solomon. Okay. Who lost actually, so that was an upset in favor of the Barcelona Raptors. Ah, Barcelona scoring a very nice win on board four against Johan Salomon, yeah. who is the board three. Um, that's okay. Well, that I mean that uh, hey, that's what you need. You need right. these. You need you need wins in general, but just you know from the lower lower rated players, it's it's, it's great stuff. So Hammer is still playing. Hammer okay. still got a game against Sherman Traws. Do we want to uh, see how he's doing? Yes, we're tuning in here because his team is down two and a half, three and a half, so they would, mm -hmm. they would so need. They're, even... they're depending on him. I mean, they're depending on him, obviously, the entire, the entire match, but the can entire he, season, one might say. Okay. Can he make progress? Progress. Here? Yeah. Um, so, Hammer. It, at first, it seems like he's up a pawn because he has c six and Black has the doubled a pawns, but the material count is actually equal. And the Black's other game, so, king is sorry. More awkward. I was just gonna say, it seems like Black's King is more awkwardly mm -hmm. placed here. Yeah, Black's oh. King is definitely not happy on h6, but I think both kings are pretty equally terrible. <laughs> okay, th uh, that's a fair point. Or uh, optimism, equally safe. Equally safe, equally sure. The, 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 the queens are distracted. Yeah. Interesting, Queen g8. That's so a tricky what move. happens after B Queen takes c6? The, the threat queen is. It's mate in two, queen f8, king h5, mm -hmm. and bishop e2. Very nice right. checkmate Right. for everybody to look at. So this is nice. Hammer but is using black's awkward king position to create some type of an attack and still protect his c6 pawn mm -hmm. while activating his queen, which is the right strategy here. And real quick, on the bottom right, uh, uh, you know, underneath... The portraits of myself and Alexandra, we have the analysis board where we have... Uh, MVL what? just drew. MVL drew again? Yeah, sorry, I was trying to hold it, but I was I was really excited. Wow. M that's not particularly <laughs> clutch of okay. I mean fine. I guess he, you know, he just took the draw, but uh what I was just gonna say is that, you know, we'll we'll look at the game in a in a moment. Uh here we have on the bottom right, we're looking at a very complex position. Daniel Forsen versus uh Larso. 
Okay, uh, let's Lars Oscar Hogg, he's the he's the international master. It's completely even based on material. But what is going on? I mean, right. The kings are on the same side of the board, so it's kind of difficult to launch pawns everybody. This is kind of an important uh, an important comment to make here that you can storm an enemy king with your pawns, but generally not when those pawns are also shielding your king. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? I mean, how can how do you make like how do you make progress here on either uh, side though like maybe knight e5 i'm just literally looking at this position trying to suggest some moves right rook c1 mm -hmm. uh I, I, i'm honestly and i mean black is down to a minute which doesn't help his case right um i i do think white black has the slight edge here because of the passing c pawn maybe because of the that... passing c pawn which obviously wouldn't matter if white had an attack which it seems like he might since his queen and knight are closer to the king but mm -hmm. when you try to look at concrete variations there's no way black can break through he if he had a dark squared bishop that would be different but with his light squared bishop here the black king is relatively safe and if he has no attack to worry about then all eyes are going to be on whether the c5 pawn can create havoc on the queen side and i'm looking at the big the, the big screen the mvl game he played a dragon while he was white he was on the white side of a of a, of a dragon sicilian and he traded off the dark squared bishop put his queen on h6 i think he was just inspired by his first round opponent i think that's what <laughs> it must have been i mean he was like look she put the queen on h6 and it worked so i'm gonna put the queen on h6 and it worked but mvl is not as good of an attacker as that talented wim and uh after knight takes d5, e takes d5, and queen f6, he didn't seem to have much of an attack, allowing some counterplay with queen f3, um, sacrificing a rook and taking a perpetual. Wow. I mean, I, I j okay, we gotta we gotta look at the other Marseille games then. Maybe he just trusts his teammates. Yep. Hammer just won that game. Hammer won with checkmate. Holy smokes! We gotta just look at that because we were oh, right there. That's unbelievable. Wow, wait. <laughs> he just marched his pawns, suffocated the Black King, and made it him? What? I mean, no, that's just ridiculous. I mean, why did his opponent play bishop c5? With five minutes on the board, yes. No, but I, I just don't understand. Like, what did, he, what did he slip? No, queen c5 doesn't make sense either. I mean, why would you play bishop? The whole point is you're, you're defending the push. And uh, you're losing now. I mean, you just lose. I he must have just blundered bishop e6, right? Um, and Chad, it, it actually, it, ju it just goes to show you that uh, um, king f1 was way safer than king h6 because your your king is always kind of, it has no way home. Whereas the white king is kind of, you know, the, the white king is, is taking a look out of the window, enjoying the open scenery over on this side of the board, but can always walk back in the house. Um, and so... Uh, I mean, to lose like this, it's kind of ridiculous, I suppose. But, okay, I mean, yeah. if I was in their shoes, you know, I, I would have done the same. So, so. okay. anyway. Uh, and, and now it's all tied again, almost except for the Cannes Blitz streams and the Berlin Bears. But this is just crazy. So, Alexandra, I think the game that we have to look at uh, as it concludes is Larso and DeForson. You are I, absolutely I correct. I think, uh, I think respecting this finals matchup is mm -hmm. is really important if, if you know regardless of the result here everybody this this is this might actually be the first time this season this has happened greg uh i know you're in the chat i don't know if you can confirm or deny this but uh would this be the first time that two rounds have concluded within and all the teams were separated by half a point at most or i guess one decisive result like four and a half three and a half yeah um, let's see what greg says if he's if he's uh here hanging that, in the chat because that's crazy four and, four 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 and a half and then you know this could be four four or four and a half that would be right um i gotta say uh kudos to the central and eastern divisions alexandra because they fight they have great fights um, are you saying that the atlantic and pacific don't or just no st louis i mean st louis did you see the chess bra channel uh I, yeah, you know, the chess bra... I know they've been crushing their opponents after three rounds fighting after the top three games uh they were three and oh i mean it was stunning it was they had nine points after three games that's like clinching a norm with a round to spare. <laughs> Very you know, good like... analogy there. Okay. Well, so... speaking of these close rounds that you are <laughs> playing up perfectly, what is going on in this international masters Lars Ho versus Daniel Esteban? 
95 okay so there's a potential queen trade but but it's complicated because and i you know i've got this on the on the analysis board here mm -hmm. so he's used the c3 pawn as a bit of a decoy right he's saying if you take if you take with the rook i can probably play rook c8 or maybe even rook d1 yeah or something else <laughs> oh no that wouldn't work so i thought rook c3 rook d1 and then you take c6 and you put a bishop on d5 and it's made on h1. But you can't do that. Because knight c6, rook c6, and the bishop is pinned. The bishop is pinned on e6 and you cannot play bishop d5 because it's illegal. It's just not allowed. Right. Um, but, uh... But it still seems like... The bishop g2? Oh, so he played bishop g2. Okay, so he's defending for, for the reason you mentioned. c2. Okay, so... He can't take on, on c2 because of rook d1. Yeah, he can't take on c2 because rook d1 would be would be very, very unpleasant. I, I mean, I got to give credit to Larso. He had a minute versus 8. He's creating incredible amounts of counter. I mean, I don't want to say counterplay, just play. He's just playing mm -hmm. great. And we saw Forsen was bad in time trouble, right? Right. He, he, he screwed up that game. Uh, ooh, we've had a lot of celebrities in chat today, but Chazbra himself... Putting the Seabra thrust emote. Uh, wow. I will actually be covering those games tomorrow with Jen Shahadi as Chesbra tomorrow has a heavyweight matchup. I mean, like, we're talking Muhammad Ali uh, <laughs> in the ring, Madison Square Garden. It's Chesbra versus St. Louis. I think it's the most intriguing matchup of the season thus far. Yes, that is um, going to be a match you guys don't want to miss. Uh, Chesbra, do you have anything you can say to hype it up in chat? One, one question I do have for Eric or, or Amon, whoever that is, is how come they're not fielding the stacked lineup is it because robin van campen was unavailable um mm -hmm. because they that that lineup was i mean that was like a death lineup that was right. you you're fielding eric hansen on board three put this in perspective this is this is absurd <laughs> i mean that's right 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 okay scheduling okay that makes sense um, scheduling okay it's a bummer i mean i don't know what on earth could have gone in you know in place of beating fabiano and wesley so but um, but priorities right <laughs> So we're gonna see, yeah, we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see Sham. That's that's an I am uh, from yep. Canada. Sham, yeah, and uh, I don't remember who the board four is, but Sean Rodriguez Lemieux. Oh, I played him. It's a game. <laughs> so maybe you you can say something on that. Yes, yes, I play. I've no, I mean Sean is Sean is solid. If he scores one or two points, that would be amazing. He's a very good player. Oh man, um, Chesbra saying Caruana betrayed them. This could be turned into a drama event. Top you know? 10 Chesbra betrayals, yes. Yeah, the Chesbra is going against the former so, Chesbra. Who got do make sure to tune stolen. in tomorrow, everybody. Tomorrow we have, uh, you know, the two the two divisions with some lopsided scoring, I must say. Yeah. Uh, some 11-5 and uh, the Atlantic Division, my New York Marshals there. We, we're lucky we haven't played St. Louis just yet, but we did get a win. We were the only team that beat Montreal in the qualifiers, so... I am looking forward to that matchup and doing commentary on that matchup. St. Louis is one of these teams that you kind of go, maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe. <laughs> um, That's so. fair. They were uh, easily a Final Four team last year. So, yeah, uh, it's, so. it's not wrong to think they'll be there again. Good luck, Chess Bros. But speaking of exciting pro chess league matches. Forcing down to 30 seconds, right? Yes. Yes, forcing down to 30 seconds. Um, obviously, Lars has less time, but he's had less time the entire game, so... You know, uh, Larso is, a, is great at bullet. I've played him in bullet many times. Is his, is his bullet rating higher than his rapid? I can check. Let me well, check. Well, no, 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 this is not his rapid rating. This is ELO. ELO. Um, oh, his bullet is 2657 on chess.com, by the way. Yeah, no, no, he's amazing. Uh, TJ Webb, thank you for the thousand bits. And Ryath earlier resub for two months. I uh, was so... So excited by the chat that I, that I missed it. But uh, Greg says that the first round Pacific Division scores were pretty close. Yeah, but, uh, you know, the Atlantic Division, not not so much. And they drew. Solid. Good for, It was great. A minute versus eight. Holds the draw and 4-4. Four, four. There you go. Another 4-4. Four, four. Okay. So, this, is, this is a fair res result given the, the crazy time pressure. We'll take it. Okay. So we got to go hunting for round three now. Round three games uh, going around... Yep. Um, so the Ljubljana Turtles and Marseille Migraines are going to be the furthest along since they started first. Yes. So we've got Jules Moussard with a with a closed positions against Luka Lenic. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we're also looking for Riki Keats, very strong player. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull two games up at the same time. Okay. Riki Keats. Uh, oops. Excuse me. I keep mistaking Riki Keats for a uh, for a yeah. uh, for a for a migraines player. Right, but yeah. I gotta he's... stop doing that. No worries. No worries. His his name is giving me a little bit of a migraine every time you say it, so it's fair. TJ Webb with another one thousand bit cheer. Aw, thanks, TJ Webb. So thank you so much, and uh, it's it you know that is the one way to interrupt the commentary if you continuously cheer. I might have to put in like a like a preemptive note, like thank you a for disclaimer. the next cheers, yes, and then and then we'll have to we'll have to look at, at the games. But Alexandra, uh, yeah. So Jur Scobern, and that is uh, m that is Leonardo. Mm -hmm, against Stefan Regoli. So we so have he, an, um, another end game here. He's up a pawn though. He's gonna. He's got to be happy, and he's got a dominant knight. So. Yep, he he should be happy in this position. Black's bishop is super awkward on f8. Um, maybe he can push with b5 and try to open it up at some point. But, but Ljubljana, rookie, rookie eight is coming too. Ljubljana also won a game already. Who who did they beat? Oh, the WIM. Oh, Laura so Unuk. Wow. Laura Unuk won in in twenty. We got to look at this game. Hold on a second. I mean, she was she must have been really angry. She was like, <laughs> "I have There's... absolutely dominated two extremely talented players." Right. And well, I mean, I don't I, I don't know about the Jules Massard game, but you know, we're just gonna hype her up. We're just gonna hype her up. I mean, of course, of course, we gotta hype it up. And look at this. This was this was brilliant. This was just. Wait a second. She just wins in 30 moves. She plays her Catalan. She gets a comfortable position. And just yeah. two bishops completely crushing. Up a rook. And, uh, well. <laughs> Did you see the last move of that game? I'm, I'm, ju I'm just looking at it on your... Uh, the the, the on very your cheeky one. queen g4 check. Almost there. This is this is a bullet trick, ladies and gentlemen. Kind of anticipating White will play Rook G3 or King H1. This is the cool thing about online chess, is that you can uh, you can play a move like this, you know, potentially anticipating one of these two moves and then take the queen. Right, but uh, with nine minutes, nobody's pre-moving stuff. Come on. Yeah, but Laura Unuk, she she waited. She waited. You know, she she didn't do the thing where you take the queen, even though she did. She 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 waited for the resignation. She was like, <laughs> I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him. You know, sit there and kind of think about the game. Um. So, queen takes g4. Wow, I mean, great game, winning in basically 20 moves. Right. Completely stunning fashion. This was this was amazing. If she can get two points like this, she's obviously very talented. She's obviously, yeah. I mean... She's been playing very well today. Um, and speaking of people playing very well, Grandmaster Wouter Spolman has a great position against Grandmaster Daniel Fridman. Aha, uh -huh, so that's uh, that's Tormos from the button yes. button matchup. Yes, mm -hmm. Tormos and AM Dr dynamic all that right so uh, analyze this game shall we oh okay well all right so now i see that bishop a6 is coming i don't know if black is totally lost but why are the grandmasters not castling again i thought you would like to see this game because i know you're very bothered by the lack of king safety in the game yeah so let's see. back up a little bit looks like this looks like hikaru playing with the white pieces i mean this is generally the setup he goes for with white right uh at least in, in blitz and rapid uh, so you see right here on move uh, 13 that black takes the pawn on a3, and the whole point is that uh, if bishop takes f6, obviously the queen cannot recapture because the rook would be taking on a3 here. So right. if bishop f6, g takes is the right idea, and castles, and Fridman says, well, I'm going to take the exchange, excuse me, I'm going to take the rook, uh, I'm going to allow you to get my rook, but I think I'm creating ample confusion, but... What? I mean... This is this is so strange. Like, couldn't he have just gone back to d6? I, I I don't I don't understand. Maybe he missed Alexandra. Maybe he missed queen c2. You think he missed queen c2? Yeah, that's the only thing that I can imagine. He probably thought that he was that he was deflecting this rook someplace, but after queen c2. Yeah, that that, that might be fair. Although it. Yeah, this is. I don't know. I, we can't mind. How read. quickly he played it. Bishop b2. No, I mean, he thought a minute and 20 seconds on bishop b2, so. I don't know. Yeah. But okay, so this is looking one for the mosquitoes. 
which again is really great for them since it's four four. They'll take any win they can get. Yeah, um, this is uh, Daniel this Friedman is... slightly higher rated, but such a close matchup that it doesn't matter too much in terms of calling him the. It, it looks like, I mean, there is just mate. I mean, something with queen d5, maybe pawn takes d4 even looks okay to then play queen d5. Or uh, the bishop can't move. Yeah, okay. The, right. Yeah, pawn takes d4 wins because the threat is to take here. It's over. The game is over. Yeah. That, that poor bishop, if he, if he moves, c8 is hanging. What, what else is he going to do? And if he doesn't move the bishop, he loses it. It's just... Devastating so, loss for poor Mr. Everybody, here. The, the point is that you're not really sacrificing this because this would open up the attack on the other bishop and just a rough, rough game for Fridman. But um, somebody in chat did mention that uh, Walter Spielman actually defeated Carlson and MVL last year in Pro Chess League. So, wow, so he is an extremely strong player. Let, if let this me is see true. how he's been performing so well this year. Oh, he's been performing. He's won all his games so far. He's four and zero. Oh? He's four and he's four four until this matchup, and I think this is his second win today. So he has a twenty eight ninety three performance. Okay. We clap to this. We clap the yeah. comment. Like you have you have definitely impressed the commentators. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, thanks for subscribing. NaCl. Which is which compound, Alexandra? Uh, sodium. Chloride? I don't know. Exactly. I don't yes, no, you do it. know it's plus two minus two oxidized on both sides. Sodium, there we go. Baby. There we go. Table salt. Let's go. All right. Um. Oh, you did you do a punch or something? No, that was early. No, okay. No, no, no. Did you did you just fist bump air? Uh, can you please fist bump me back? I I feel okay. Really okay. Like, on three. Okay, One, two, two, three. Three. Boom. Thanks. Okay, you kind of like it was kind of feeble, but it it's okay. We All we right. will take it. Um, but I will say this: Daniel Fridman is very good. At uh, at creating counterplay because yeah. he I played him in Chicago Open last year, and I was I was better, but he he went for a very forcing variation, and then like eight moves in I miscalculated, and if I played the right move I was completely winning. Really? Um, uh, apologies. Okay, plus one minus one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, uh, you know what? I, Speaking of uh, minus one, it looks like Luca Lenish is beating Jules Moussard with the black pieces. Oh yeah, that was a oh. very good transition. I that tried, was, yeah. That was very clever, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, um, black is a queen. Where's white's queen, Alexandra? Oh man, uh, why are you asking me? I don't know what happened to this poor queen. We have to scroll back a little bit. You know, I, I don't quite like that you've turned you've turned it into a meme that uh, you are, you know, you are like the blunder queen of, of, of the queen or something like that. I mean, we, we, we should give this honor to Jules Moussard. For this game, at least. <laughs> just got a message from, from staff. Title that quickly. What yeah, just got a message from staff saying, hashtag stay in school. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's mean. That's mean, but I'll take it. I'll take that one on the chin. Um, Doc Dauntless, you caught. No, that was all Levy. That was uh, all Levy. But uh, okay, well, how how does Black break through here? Um, probably Queen F seven, and then and then and then uh, Queen F four. Yep. Or Queen F Queen E seven, Queen F six, Queen F four. Okay, well, he doesn't want that to happen. Uh, okay. Queen F six. Good. White's trying to defend. It's a, it's a little bit interesting still, since right now the game is perfectly blockaded. Right, White. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it was until F four happened. We shouldn't be watching this. I I, I mean this 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 is this is like watching a, a wounded uh a, like a. A wounded soldier tried to fight. I mean, it's not okay. The, the okay. referee should stop in. All right, Commissioner let's, should let's, stop this. <laughs> well, so the Louisiana Turtles are going to take the lead, six and a half to four and a half, and they only have one other game left, which is mm -hmm. honestly not the most interesting game we've seen all day right now with the current position. It's Leonardo versus Maya Evely, Stefan okay. Rigoli versus Yuri Scoperni. Okay, so this looks like... Yeah, Actually, I mean, White can get a, a little bit of a more tricky position here. I don't well, know. Well, here's the thing. If white loses the C4 pawn and black loses the C5 pawn, right? And we, you know, we mm -hmm. can put this up on on this screen for everybody. Uh, if white, if, if these pawns disappear, uh, like the Joker says, I'm going to make this pencil disappear. Um, you would have four versus three on the same side. But this knight is so strong. 
that even though the pawns seemingly can't make progress, you can just continuously put pressure, put pressure, put pressure. Ten seconds on the clock for black also doesn't help. So, right. So, um, so maybe white, you do think white can pull off a win here. That would be the Ljubljana Turtles coming with a three-point lead after being perfectly tied. Knight takes g7, no? In the first game. Uh, you're right, knight takes g7, king takes, take the bishop. Now yeah. he just has to decide if four on two on the same side is a draw. Okay, so he's he's oh. just gonna... Oh, he's going knight f3, knight h4, knight g6, maybe? What about or, knight oh, oh, this, 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 okay, this is, yeah. Uh, so King... is trading the bishop here a win? Because white has an extra pawn, but it's doubled, so I think that actually might be a draw if he just trades everything. Not if you play king f1 and f3. Very precise. And rookie 3 wow. king f2. Wow. wow. Instructional moment, everybody. Can we get uh, another clap for this one? Yes. This is very impressive. We very almost nice. Them up. <laughs> uh, friends, this is an important instructional moment. Here I was thinking king f3 because you'd like to deflect the rook away because the rook doesn't have many free squares. But if you play king f3, then rookie 1 is an issue. And the, king, and, and the rook hides out. But in the game... We had king f1, the counterintuitive looking move, rook e4, f3, only move coming back, and now king f2, the rook has been evicted, rook e5, takes, takes, easy clap, everybody, easy clap, <laughs> very nice. Such a comeback, amazing. Wait, that means they crushed, they just won three and a half half. Right, that's, that's what, what I was <coughs> excited about as well. Sorry, I wasn't reinventing the wheel. Alexandra totally beat me to no, that no, point. No, no, uh... I, I didn't. I didn't mean it like that. Um, but I think what Greg was saying earlier, where they didn't have their strongest player until this matchup. So Grandmaster Luka Lenic, he wasn't available, and now he's back, ready to help the team. And obviously, the rest of the team is also playing well. I have. A, I have a question. Uh, this player, whose username is Leonardo, who is uh, Jure Scobern, mm -hmm. did he name himself Leonardo? Because the turtles, and there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle named Leonardo. I do not know anything about the show, but if there These is a turtle the named real Leonardo, questions. I mean, the facts add up. You, Detective Levy back at it. Sherlock Holmes, I've got a lot of identities, and it has... Oh, Greg Shahadi said yes. Yes. Of course. Okay, okay very nice. Good. I'm happy. Um, very nice. Okay, what other games do we have? So, uh, we, Baden, Baden, Baden Baden and Amsterdam Mosquitoes, they're going to be the next ones to wrap up. I'm trying to see if there's an interesting game between... Oh, yes, there is. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Grandmaster Dimitri Kolars versus Grandmaster Haza Lopez. So, I am underscore Dimitri is his username. Similar mm -hmm. time, except that White has a really nice attack here. But it's, it's a little bit complicated because the rook on E1 is not protected. Bishop is pointing towards G6. Uh... I think white just has to convert a better position here. And there's a, there's another thing to keep in mind uh, as we... Oh, it was a French defense exchange variation. I, I think we are going to have to uh, kick out Grandmaster Kolars from the Pro Chess League. That's just against the rules, ladies and gentlemen. Playing the exchange French? Yep. It's been added this year. Well, everybody, so so uh, do keep in mind and st stick with us. Uh, the top matchup that you see, Ljubljana versus Marseille, is actually, it, it's 12 games in. We've got one game remaining. And I would say that Ljubljana has all but clinched the win. I mean, they need one point out of four. They're up seven and a half, four and a half, generally being plus three going into the last round. Is yeah. good unless you are Minnesota and you win three and a half, half in the final round and you tie the match. Right, so, right, right. Uh, that happened last week, everybody. Please go tune in. Uh, watch the recaps. There's no copyrighted, you know, um, no copyrighted yeah. music played, so... Yeah, but thanks for bringing that up. I didn't even pay enough attention to the fact that they just need one more point to be winning, so it's going to be an exciting last game. MVL, you're not allowed to draw anymore. Yeah, MVL, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> Come on, MVL! <laughs> Alexandra, if you're the coach of the Marseille Migraines, MVL. what do you say to MVL? MVL, I know we are French, but come on. One draw is too many. Something like that. Oh, I tried. Oh, uh, you're an inspiring coach. I would say <laughs> you. You listen to me. You listen to me. Now you listen to me. You are 2780. You have a seal. You are so high rated. They, t they nerfed you to 2700. <laughs> to 2700. And you can't beat these people? MVL, my goodness, my goodness, we have to have a chat. So, um, 
Now, Alexander, I've got two Baden-Baden games in front of me. I have Dimitri Kolars on the big board versus Jocelyn Lopez and uh, Ina Agres, the board four, playing against Quintin Ducermont. That was okay. very Ducermont. Uh, I'm going to let you do the accents. I'm just going to say I'm not afraid to fail. I tried. I'm sorry I let you down, Chad. You didn't let me down, Alexander. This is, I'm, I'm, having a great, I'm having a great time. Uh, Amazing. So, remember, everybody, also that Fridman, the 2600-rated player for uh, Baden-Baden, actually already lost. Right? Like, he, he right. was upset. He, uh, he was already losing. So, it's 5-4 already for Amsterdam. They've scored a win uh, in this round, which is an upset win. And now they have to maybe get like six, six and a half, a comfortable score going into the final round. Um, Very true. Um, so we're looking at the game between, yeah. Or did, did you switch from the game with Ina Agres? Oh, I have both games up. So on the big screen, I'm looking at Dimitri's game, which looks equal, but could get complicated in time trouble. Mm -hmm. Ina Agres is holding it steady. She was up in exchange, but she's given it back. Mm -hmm. uh, if we, oh, excuse me, if we back up a little bit to this game, she was under severe pressure from these bishops. I mean, this is right. like that aerial view. That was pretty bad, yeah. Yeah, they were eyeing the position. The rook very, very well placed. Um, but, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, at least she got out of that attack, but now she's also going to be down a pawn in an open endgame with a bishop first knight. Yeah, the down upon is is definitely an issue, but you know, if black wins her, you know, black wins the only dark squared pawn she has. It's like you mentioned. Now the other pawns are on light squares and they can't be targets anymore. And furthermore, I I don't quite know how white is going to uh, excuse me, how black is going to Yeah, how is black going to defend f7? I was just about to say that. Um, I guess he's just going to let f7 fall. Um but the, the thing is that in these positions, I think the knight can more comfortably sit on a square forever. Like, if the knight oh. goes to c4, mm -hmm. how are I, you getting I, rid of it? I, you're right. But yeah, king f6 is actually a great move, because now he can't take on f7 because of king e6. Right, rook takes f7, so she plays knight takes f7, but that's a that's committal. I mean, those pieces are yeah. tied down. Just Well, you can't go back, right? No knight d6 back. Yeah, he kind of... He, he, out, he outmaneuvered here, here a bit. Mm -hmm. But he but at least he's the one with time pressure, as you were pointing out. So rookie six, yeah, he is under he is under pressure for sure. I mean the quality, trust me, chat, I would say right around the 40, 50 second mark, the quality of chat, excuse me, wow, the quality of chat. No, your quality well, is amazing, chat. The quality of chat too just goes crazy. No, I'm kidding. Um but the quality of the moves goes down significantly. I mean right. it, it takes um Sorry, yeah, you're right. It, the quality of the moves do drop significantly. So you're predicting it right and out, right about now, right? Since Inagris is under almost thirty seconds now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? You know, just just to have this game up on the big screen, I, I do think it's more interesting. Although, ah, uh, now, no, no, no. Dimitri Kolaris is up three pawns and a bishop. Excuse me, and a rook. So Dimitri Kolaris has one for Baden Baden. It's five five. It's five five. I can pull up a game on the screen now. We've got Ina Agres, mm -hmm. and who is the final game? Uh, the final game, so you have Ina Agres. Let me find the last one. Do you have George Meyer? No, of course. How can I forget the, the Mr. Meyer on the bottom board of course. here? Excuse me. The, well, you know, the... well um, yeah, that game is lost for white because there's an extra queen on the board. I can very comfortably say that. <laughs> Gerg Meyer, I think, is trolling his opponent. Yeah, well, he's, he's annoyed that his opponent isn't resigning, maybe. Okay. This is this is really funny. Gerg Meyer is so now you promote and you draw, right? Or is he gonna under promote to a knight? Okay. This is oh. very funny. Seriously, come on guys. Don't Yeah, that was that okay. So so Baden Baden wins. They have six points, and it looks like man, it's all coming down to this game. It's all coming down to this game. Five five. Incredible. Okay. Well no, uh, Baden Baden is at six now because Gerg has one, and right, so did right. Dimitri, yeah. So it's six. It's six five. Baden Baden surges ahead. Uh, let's see and... if international master Ducarmon can take back a win for their team. He does have a much better position now, and he just flagged uh, WIM Ina Agrest. Wow, she actually lost on time. Oh no, it's not a loss on time. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's uh, sometimes they flag and you go, go wait what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Okay, but so she was in a much worse position here, or much more difficult to defend. Chat and everybody, this is this is this is. Uh, it looks like the knight is guarded. Well, I guess this would be a check, but the the whole idea here is bishop d two, x ring, and you've got to be careful when there's a dark squared bishop, and every piece you have is on a dark square. Right. You always have to be a little bit careful. Uh, so. So ba button button. Six six Alexandra. All all locked and in, going into the final round. Let's look at uh Can and Berlin, which is four and a half, four and a half. Speaking of being all locked, so are they? Uh okay. We got okay. Grandmaster Krikor. Of course. He's playing against Grandmaster Eric Braun. Right. This is kind of a weird looking end game. Um black spawns are not the cutest, but now he managed to double white pawns as well. So at least they both have terrible looking pawn structures. They're they're in this together, you know. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's it's. Uh, have, did you ever watch Sherlock Holmes: A Game of Shadows? No, I haven't. Okay, I mean this must be this must be like a top three movie for me. The 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 Sherlock Holmes movies one of the one of the most amazing renditions. I think chat might disagree with me, but there's a final scene where they're up on the balcony. And Sherlock Holmes forecasts a fight. Really? And because he has a shoulder injury, uh, Moriarty is going to win the fight. And Moriarty knows it too. And so Sherlock Holmes goes, you know, prognosis increasingly negative, conclusion inevitable, unless... And then he blows, like, the pipe ashes at Moriarty, and they both flip over the balcony. And I go... Wait, they flip over the balcony? Yes, he, he, he flips both of them over the balcony, and they fall into a river. But, but, but... That is not the conclusion, so there's no spoilers, chat. No spoilers. Everybody chill. Everyone's like, what? What? You spoiled the movie, dude. <laughs> That's okay. So. You didn't spoil you didn't spoil it for me. Um also Forty Drew. I, I didn't realize I wasn't hosting this. Thanks, Dave. Forty Drew. We've got Creek we're still playing. Uh and two games left. So that means Berlin and where's where is uh where is our final matchup here? The final matchup in the match it's the burger matchup, Paul Velton and Steve Berger. How can we forget Burger Burger? Woo! Another pawn on A7. Pawns have been very tricky this entire league. We always see somebody trying to promote, and I think so far the person with the isolated pawn has won more positions from the games we've seen today. Well, isolated pass pawn, okay. The yeah, the pawn, pawn has been really, really nice. Uh, that that game that Forsen played, remember? Queen a6, taking on f1. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, not Sebastian. Um, uh... Okay, so let, let's take a look here. Uh, you're, we're on the Burger Burger game. Um, yes, I'm on material? both. I've got pre core yeah. Yeah, so material is better for white white is up upon currently and black just offered a rook trade which is interesting because after rook takes d4 black has to take back with the pawn and then he's going to get a weak pawn on d4 uh which is going to become a target pretty easily for with the white king, knight and the king rook, yeah but at least e4 is falling so that's probably what he calculated there of course, like, I mean, just looking at the position you're inclined to say, I mean, we're nearing an endgame in chat, like a good way of evaluating endgames, and, and this is kind of on the border, while B4, so he's, ah, this is very logical, if you swap the knights, white is always winning, because of the same concept, a piece mm -hmm. tied down to a passing pawn completely crushes your mobility, you just can't move, we've seen this kind of concept a couple times here today, when you play so many good games of chess, there's, you know, 64 games in front of us, uh, iconic, right? Sixteen. Ooh, times, uh, yeah. That's. I wonder if uh, Greg thought of that. Okay. So yeah, that's why we don't have five divisions. We have four. So uh, that's uh, yeah. So four. You know, four. Uh, four matchups. Uh, B four is such a beautiful move. So yeah, B four is a very clever decision, and now yeah, uh, Black has white... to retreat and. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No. No. I was just gonna say. I mean, if, if, if obviously you can't trade the knights, mm -hmm. so that means you have to play knight B seven, which is ugly. Knight d7, which is ugly. Right. And you don't... I mean, you're retreating and your most active piece is your king. This is bad, right? This is this is not fine. Um, so this is this is very, very unfortunate for, uh, for, for black. black. It looks right. like Berlin is going to score a point. It's going to be 6-5. And then what is going on in Krikor's game? Okay, back at Krikor's game. Krikor looks to be better. So if Krikor scores a win, this match is 6-6. Amazing. So, 
Krikar is better, but does white have any checkmating chances here? The knight, yeah, the knight on d6 potentially. It, it does look tricky. I mean, obviously we like favoring material imbalances in the end game because that's when they play out the most. So just being up a pawn in the end game is a lot more powerful most of the time than in openings. Uh, but white's going to get it back, and he does have some scary looking attacks. You know, honestly, uh, at first glance, I did I did like Krikor's prospects a bit better, but uh, knight e three, for example. Yeah, this knight is actually looking much more tricky now that I look at it. I mean, I like his prospects a few moves back when the bishop on e five was still kind of gluing the position together, mm -hmm. and we had four pawns, as you mentioned, on the f file. But now that I'm looking at this, like it looked like he was getting some plays, but uh. Yeah, and this and, and and you know this is the tricky thing, everybody. I mentioned this a bit earlier. In mm -hmm. in any match format, you want to keep the game going, and so he knows now the results, hopefully, of his you know his teammates, and he goes, okay, we're mm -hmm. we're gonna lose probably on one of these boards, and uh, right, because he's so, probably looking at the boards as well. So he's like, should I play for a win? And he might have gotten a bit too aggressive at the wrong moment, and now it might backfire. He might even lose, and you know Berlin would be up seven five going into the final round. So oh, that would be brutal. Um, uh, gnomes have a 5-4 lead, but we will look at their games, obviously, when these wrap up. I love the staggering yeah. format, by the way. It's, it's awesome. It, yeah, for sure. Otherwise, we would have missed so many games. So, uh, shout out to the Greg. special person in chat who came up with that. Greg, Greg liked that we were complimenting uh, him on, on very trivial tasks. <laughs> well, I, I would say coming up with the Pro Chess League rules is not a trivial task. So, for that... He deserves some credit. Yeah. Um, okay, so rook d7. I, I like this. So I'm guessing he's saying if king takes h5, I'm going to take back on h7. Uh-huh. Um, but then the king can go back to g6, so maybe he has probably more Probably ideas. a draw. Pro probably. You think just a draw? I, 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 don't, I don't think that you can untie the queenside knot. I think this is a really funny... I think this is a really funny thing here. You just... You just they're having like a little convention over on the b and c area. I just like the ideas with knight e3 and king f5, but I think you're probably right. It's too hard to untie. No, but speaking of which, if you play knight e3 here, mm -hmm. oh, if you play knight e3 right now with the idea of either knight f5 or knight g4, I think knight e3 maybe rook, uh, bishop d2 here. Bishop d2, right, because you cannot... Or, yeah, bishop d2 is a nice move, I think. Yeah, bishop d2 is a really nice move here. Okay, meanwhile... Just get rid of uh, that annoying knight. All Velton has won. So it is now another point for Khan, so it's 6-5. Okay. And, uh, you know, we oh, can pull next up... game started right away. No, no rest for, for the players here. I think, I think the games that are starting are the, the Baden-Baden games. Yeah, so Georg Meyer has started, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Ljubljana is what you meant. Uh, Ljubljana's been in their, in their game, so uh, we, can, we can look here. Uh, I'm looking at MVL. Okay. Who is not allowed to draw anymore? Yeah, MVL, you gotta stop that, buddy. And on the bottom right, everybody, we're gonna keep an eye on the Krikor game to see what ultimately happens uh, in this matchup after knight e3. So we have MVL here with black. Man, MVL looks passive, Alexandra. Uh, looks like he's under severe pressure. That c7 pawn is really ugly. Yep, and his rook on a7 <laughs> is, is uglier. Is, yeah, I mean, it's like a battle of the uglier, you know? It's like one of the brothers got the bad genes, but then you see the younger one and you're like, I guess he actually got lucky. Yeah, that's how I feel. You know, my younger brother and <laughs> no. I, we uh, he definitely got the cute genes, that's for sure. And the, and the better hair. Okay. Um, but Not, uh... no. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Leo if you're watching, by the way. Uh, okay. Although I suppose you're... No, it's MLK. You're not, you're not in school. You've, you've got a day off today, bud. So... Um... Oh, you're right. Today is a holiday for most normal people. Uh, Enjoy it. You you Watch might have chess. just insulted every country that's not America. No, I meant normal people in the U.S. who work okay nine, nine to five jobs. Sorry, okay. uh, that's what I meant. Yeah, not the rest of the world that doesn't celebrate this. No, I, actu I actually no, I actually didn't. I actually didn't. But good point. I'm sorry if that yes. came off. Yes, the, the rest of the world, you're you're amazing too. You're you're better than us probably. So. Um, hey, I I have three nationalities and only one of them is American. So. So, which one do you associate with the most? Probably the American one. Yeah, American. Uh, America. All right. America. Okay, so MVL has started to dig his way out. The bishop on e5, we you know we didn't give enough credit to. It's holding mm -hmm. together c7 very well. But let's put it this way: 
White, I think white is the one playing for the two results. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the more I look at it, with opposite colored bishops, the knights come into play a lot more. White can potentially put pressure on the center with bishop d6, maybe knight right. e5. But I think at any moment, white can also play knight takes b6 and try to push through with c7. For instance, what if you play knight takes b6 and... Isn't this just a draw? Look, knight takes b6. Knight takes b6, okay. Cb. Mm -hmm. Let's say you play bishop takes f7 even. Okay. King takes and c7. Uh, bishop takes, rook takes. Bishop I mean, takes not not a draw, but equal. Yeah, rook and equal pawn endgame with nothing too tricky should be a draw here. Now the only thing is that the d4 pawn could be an issue, but the king is very close, and you know white can always play rook c6 and try to gobble. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I'm not so sure he will make such a committal decision until he knows the situations on the other boards. That's the other thing. Meanwhile, on the smaller screen, everybody, if you look at the bottom right, we've got Brown putting significant pressure on Krikor. Krikor down, and White actually emerged with a pawn up. Okay, so let's, let's go look at that. Krikor wow. is, is at four seconds, and oh, got it. I hope he doesn't flag. Um, yeah, this is this is very tough now. Rook a5 preventing the pawn from moving. Uh, yikes. Rook a6, now f6. This this game, Alexandra, might end up being rook and knight versus rook. And I think, actually, white wants to avoid that. Right. As long as he can. Because those are usually draw. a draw. <laughs> unless, other than in very specific situations, yeah. Yeah, very specific. And also, like, I mean, if you can blunder, of course. And with five seconds, it's very likely. It's possible, you're right. So... Um, well... Eric Braun should definitely try to keep the pressure for as long as he can, although Krieger has recovered from being close to, to flagging here. Yeah, he's definitely winning some time back, but I mean, it's so tricky. Plus, he has the knight, right? The knight is always always looking at various checks in the position, and uh, you've got to be careful of forks. I mean, I, I think th the most likely situation is that the bishop will have to sacrifice itself, and, mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, we'll tune in a little bit, but we're not going to... Yeah. Okay, so Hammer drew his game, and... D. Mm -hmm. Forsen won by resignation against Johan Solomon. So that's, again, keeping the Norway Gnomes and Barcelona Raptor match very close. Very close. And that means that there's one game remaining in that match, isn't there? Yep. That means that uh, the game that we have to look at, is it Terror? It's not Terror del Caribe. It's, uh... it's uh, Larso and Stewie Griffin. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, this game, it was at the bottom of my screen. No worries. Uh, uh, keep, keep, uh... I kept, I kept going, where is the game? I can't see it. It's the last game on my screen, so... Wait, wait, so are they tied or are the Barcelona Raptors in the lead now? No, 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 they have, no, it's no, five and a half, five, yep. Yeah, they're tied, they're tied, okay. Yep, wow, that's crazy. Such a, such a close day of games, except, except our first one, which was blown open in, in the third quarter. Just like the Golden State Warriors win all their games in the third quarter, so did the Ljubljana Turtles. Yep. Someone well, asked me what the time is per match. It's, oh, somebody pointed it out in chat. That's why we have amazing moderators. Thank you, guys. Crazy Coffee Man, Chess Bay, Greg. Yeah, Shabon. why don't we? Uh, why don't we? Why don't we do a round of just shout outs for people? Shout out to the mods. Shout out to our commissioner, of course. You know, Greg. Uh, Coffee Man's been holding it down. We've got we've got Z Nation. Uh, and of course, I mean, at the very, very, at the very pinnacle, uh, we've got BGH, Chess Bay. We wouldn't be anywhere without those two. Um, yep. uh, in no particular order. Uh, well, actually, in some particular order, perhaps. So much love. If I can troll Ben a little bit. Uh, so just an amazing, you know, and everybody behind the scenes that's making this happen, all the commentators. And uh, another cool thing that we have on the chess.com channel, everybody, is the feature channel extension. So if you that hover is... over your mouse, you Ooh. can. Drop a follow, sorry, I interrupted your, your brain no, blast. I, I just went back to check the analysis board, and it's what you predicted, Rook and Knight. But please go ahead with the Yes, extension. it's Rook and Knight, ultimately. But uh, wait, oh, no, sorry, I thought there was a blunder on the board that I saw, but there isn't. Uh, no, just, I mean, I mean, everybody that's making this happen, and the feature channel extension is, uh, you can drop a follow on the commentators. We are, yep. we are prominently featured. And also Jib Chess, which is not gibberish chess, but Gibraltar. Yeah, just and... hover over the screen and you'll be able to do it in one click. Yes, you could do this very easily on a desktop. And if you have a mobile device, it actually is a little puzzle piece icon that you can click on that allows you to one touch follow the commentators. We have Armenia Eagles in the chat, which is a celebrity in and of itself, defending champions. 
of the Pro Chess League. True. Um, Welcome, Armenia Eagles. Welcome back, you guys. I don't have my Armenia Eagle mug today, but I have had it during many of my streams. So good to see you guys again. Yeah, so I, I think Krikor will save the game. We'll yeah, turn it into like a draw. And, well. um, all right, so why don't we... Yeah, let's, let's look at Ljubljana a little bit. So Okay, because we, we just need to see one more win on their end. I'm going to, and then on a big screen, I've got I've got Larso versus Jose Herrera still open, just so we see how how the situation shapes out for the latest matchup, which is the Gnomes. What's going so, on? The game between Grandmaster Jules Musard and Grandmaster Matej Shebenik from uh -huh. the Ljubljana Turtles. Whoa! Well, yeah, there's a king on f7 again. The queen is coming in. The pawns are on the fourth. I thought we had to look at this. I don't know if white has a devastating blow coming just yet, but it is an exciting position for sure. Okay, so so a modern defense from Jules Musard. Now, Jules Musard is basically saying, look, we're probably going to lose this match, right? We're down three points. Let me, let me play for a win. Uh, and remember, everybody, this is the last round. So the format is you start with one versus four and you kind of shift around. So now we've got the, the, the board number two fighting it out. Uh, and <laughs> Matze Sebenik was like, my guy, I'm all for this fight. And he, he plays h4, a4, just swinging on both sides. <laughs> uh, sacrifices a piece. Sacrifices a piece. I mean, it looks like it looks like a Morphe game, Alexandra. Queen d8, I, like... Yes. This is crazy. And, and you know the crazy thing? He sacrificed the piece for a pawn. Not two, not three, one. And he's sort of saying, dude, you don't play chess like this against me. I don't care if you have to win. I'll win the game. So, oh, this is a bold game. I bet if we analyze this and put it on some YouTube channel and switched his name to Morphe, people would be like, yeah, Morphe. That's exactly how Morphe played. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Super aggressive, going for that initiative, dynamic play. But if I can, the question yeah. is, how, how does he convert this? Because Black has all almost all of his pieces protecting his king yes they're very passive they're not defensive um but if he's able to get out of this then he just has a material advantage because like you said he sacrificed a piece for just one right. one right right now i'm just looking at the position i mean i mean this is this is a dream position to play in blitz and bullet mm -hmm. uh as the aggressive side now somebody uh a couple out like about an hour ago said that you know when i mentioned it's it's good to limit your opponent's options they said no it's actually the opposite in complex positions, you want them to contemplate a lot of options because they would spend time and they might make the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. So both are true. And as we kind of learn in chess and in life, it's it's a balance of, of both worlds. Uh, point, White's, White's play here is very easy, right, Alexandra? Like, if you gave White two moves in a row, I, I don't know about you, but I would play knight f3 and rook f1. Of course, yeah. Right? Like, it's kind of like pre-move. Yeah, and it makes sense because these are the only two pieces that are not part of your attack. And the more pieces you have, the more likely you are to figure out a way to checkmate black here. Yes, and so I saw Armenia Eagles in the chat was saying rook d6 is possible. So, um... Ooh, rook d6 right away. Interesting. So, yeah. I mean, rook d6 looks good because it's threatening c6, which black would not be able to take back. His knight is pinned. So that would be a pretty awkward threat for black. Where would he put his knight? Larso is going to beat Jose Herrera. Okay, let's. Which means that yeah no yeah I've got it I've got it up on the screen. It's just up two pawns in an end game. Very mm -hmm. easy conversion now. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah that 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 looks like yeah that's he's it. going for that twenty nine hundred performance. Twenty eight hundred was not good enough for him, right? Chat, are, I see folks saying like now it's equal and things like that. I mean, okay, if you if you're analyzing with an engine, you know, okay, you look at the zeros or whatever, and you go, yeah, it's equal. <laughs> Any idiot can see that. I mean, look at <laughs> chat. This is this position is literally the furthest thing from equality, practically speaking. I mean, you know, this is this is the dangerous thing. You you analyze the game with an engine, you go, oh, it was zero zero zero, but I lost. I lost an equal position, but you didn't know that. You know, you how did, you look at this position. It's total pandemonium on the right side of the board. So, yeah, let's, exactly. Let's pull this up on the big screen, everybody. Also, uh... I, I actually messed up. Lars, this is his first match he's playing. He hasn't played yet, so so far he's doing really good. Well, got it, got it. Okay, I see, I see what you mean. And he just won. Yeah, I confused him for another board four. Ljubljana has clinched uh, because uh, Leonardo actually won his game. Mm -hmm. 
So Leonardo was victorious. And uh, yeah, just a, just a... And, and the Ljubljana Turtles are coming back from the bottom too. Nicely done. So check this out, everybody. Uh, we've got we've got the scoreboard updated a bit for everybody uh, to see here. Ljubljana has won with eight and a half, but of course, I mean, they can continue to rack up points. Uh, it's <laughs> it's not over. I mean, they can they can keep keep on adding. You know what I mean? Like now you're going for the jackpot. You've already set the victory, but now you're going for. Uh, you're trying to steal all the cookies in the cookie jar, I would say. <laughs> and the new format of the league this year actually rewards game points. So an important concept. Yep. Uh, so it's not just about the victories. It's, you know, it's also about the margin. It's not about the losses. You, know, you might actually later in, 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 the, in the season, like you might need a couple of games from matches where things went south. So it's better not to take pity draws. Fight exactly. for the win in all the games. Exactly. Um which is a great way of making the games more exciting. We know that Grandmasters do like to draw occasionally, to put it nicely, but this never. time they have never. the pressure on. Absolutely never. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. never. GMs draws what? Grandmasters make draws? <laughs> I find this is news to me. Okay, so 6-6 six, six for Baden-Baden and the Mosquitoes, and 6.5 to 5.5 for both the Blitzstreams and the Gnomes. Wow. By far, I think the close... Well, it was very close after two, but Ljubljana burst out after the third game uh, with the win. But uh, yeah, every other match is separated by you know one game point or less. So Right. <clears throat> now now everybody is... Yeah, let's let's take a look at the Mosquitoes as a gust of wind just hit my window, and, I, and I'm, I'm really scared for my life, I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to pull oh, up Gerd Meyer on the screen. Okay. Also, Luka Lenic and MVL, they're still playing. Um, we'll see if MVL is able to get a win or if he's going to end up drawing that game. But we yeah. can check later on, yeah. So, well, I mean, Ljubljana's already won, so what do we do? Do we abandon MVL and say, you let your team down, Frenchman? What, what, how did it go? Oh, I think, I think we can check in on him later since no, that, that match you is know, already decisive. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, okay, a half a point here, a half a point there in terms of his draws, but he didn't lose. You know, at the end of the day, it came down to... The twos and the threes fighting it out. The board four beat the board three, right? Yeah, uh, but when you put somebody so strong on board one, you expect that you're going to lose a little half. bit more in the lower boards and win more on the top boards. So, right? No, I yeah, right. I totally agree. So, well, quick hands, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, Rook F E A. Uh, Gerg Myers kind of. Gerg Meyer, by the way, I must say, has an amazing style for a last round game. Meaning, long game, pressuring the opponent, and the teammates, like I said, get to keep an eye on your board. This game, this is the only match, Mosquitoes versus uh, Snowballs, Baden Baden Snowballs, that's going into uh, the, the final round 6-6. Six, six. We haven't had a lot of these instances uh, right. so far in the league, and it's very rare. So, I also want to call out one comment from chat from... Uh -huh. Sina, how does George Meyer manage to keep all his games boring like that? I think it's a great skill. I try to do that, but I have crazy games anyway. Sad face. George Meyer has been playing pretty boring games. Do you have any yeah. thoughts on that, Levy? No, I mean, style? no, it's it, it's kind of a, it's actually kind of a funny running joke. Like any host of the Arena Kings will make a comment on it. I mean, it's just the style. He's a technician. Like that, you know, that's what he likes to do. His strategic he doesn't mind having the same position literally i mean all the time so i what, can and, relate i can relate yeah like i i, I can't like you know my i can't do that i can't do that uh, so everybody's got a different style and the amazing thing about chess at a higher level is you can make it artistic you can make it scientific you could make it aggressive you know whatever so um but you know he played the catalan in french for life exactly so <laughs> and yeah it's gerg not george Sam Copeland pointing it out, so... Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Wait a second, I think Jules Moussard might have just trapped a queen? Oh. Okay, let's get back to that game, This is then. This is no good. I mean, well, Ljubljana has won, honestly, so... So, so but maybe it's, it's interesting anyway. It's, it's a little bit interesting, I suppose. Okay. Where? Um, how did that white queen get there? So it was on d6... No, it was on c7 last time we looked, so he went to b6 and a6. Okay. Bishop g5, and now the queen is trapped, Alexandra. Look at this brilliant maneuver. Rook b7, rook b8, and the queen is stuck on a6 completely. All the squares. Oh, but bishop takes e7. 
I miss this idea, actually. And the point is that the queen can't take because the queen doesn't protect the knight like a knight would. Right. So the, so knight, the knight has take. to take back. Well, does it? Because can you play bishop takes a6, bishop takes c4? Okay, now knight g5. Sorry, they moved too fast for... And now bishop takes e6 bishop looks takes like a Bishop takes e6 thing? is on the cards? This is insane. I mean, this is... Uh, but okay, position is equal because computer valuation, you know? <laughs> Nobody in chat saying that this time. That's okay. Wait, Alexandra, what about on bishop takes e7? Could black has played queen e8? That is an amazing okay, okay. move. Okay, we're going to have to go back and slow it down a bit because they are blitzing this out. So you're saying king g7 and then queen e8? No, no, So on bishop takes e7, the move mm -hmm. queen e8. Got it. And you don't take, and the knight now has new protection on c6, mm -hmm. and the queen is still under attack, so the queen doesn't get free, doesn't take the knight. That's, that's, that's pretty wild. I like that idea. I guess the only thing maybe he was worried about was knight g5 coming in after that. Yeah, maybe. Here, let's, let's, let's switch these two around. Because then after bishop takes on e6, which is going to happen at some point, he's freeing his queen. We're going to demote Gergmeier to, uh the small board and we're going to take a look at this game on the big board. So on move 27 when we had the move king h7 bishop takes e7 it looks like you have to take something but here just queen here knight g5 check and okay what if king g8 this is an issue i think i i don't i don't understand actually like aren't aren't you just okay bishop takes e Oh, the bishop takes e6 check, deflects the bishop attack on the queen? Is that what's going on here? This position is right. ridiculously... I mean, as Danny Wrench said when he was broadcasting with Anna, they don't pay me enough. For <laughs> they don't pay me enough to do this insane commentary. Like, bishop e6? That's insane. Well, Chad is sitting there, you know, with this thing going, blah, 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 bishop e6, and... Uh, yes, uh, that's fair. But, oh, okay, so Mate is now under... Oh, he has sorry. bad internet connection also. He's under a minute... Maybe that had some play into him not doing the most accurate line there. Because it was also really complicated, like you see even when you're playing it out, right? So, Georg Meyer, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I have Georg Meyer pulled up. And, okay, yeah, I mean, obviously this game is extremely complicated, but Ljubljana has already scored 9.5, so it's better to just, obviously, f how about Tormos? Is Daniel Fridman going to make a comeback? Whoops, I almost spilled water all over myself. So... The two games chat. We've got Georg Meyer at the bottom right, and we've got Fridman versus Miguel Admiral. Oh, so the Ljubljana Turtles, nine and a half to five and a half. Completely crushing. Just a great showing today. Yeah, wait. So who who just won that last game? Whoa! Oh, no, sorry. I got it. <laughs> Jubated! Okay, MBL Whoa! MBL oh, no, just kidding. Game. MBL won a game. Okay. Um, exactly. So TJ Webb makes a good point. Uh, shout out to you saying... I, I like to tell this to students, you know, e e zero, zero, zero doesn't mean draw. It means sometimes the engine literally goes, I don't know. Ask your, uh, ask your parents, my guy. I, I got no clue, you know? Exactly. The engine like is the same as Danny. The engine does not get paid enough for that kind of position. Exactly. Like, I mean, it, you know, it's like you want, you want treats and your grandmother goes, ask your mother. You know, I'm not, you know, your mother has the final say. I remember this from childhood. Grandma, can I can I do this? I don't know. Ask, ask, <laughs> your mom's got to sign off on it. Right, Computer's right, like, right. I don't know. Ask grandma. So, <laughs> the engine is from Boston. I don't know. <laughs> the engine's always from Boston. Um, okay, so, we have another decisive result. Um, oh, W I am Ina Agres just beat the mosquito board. Board four? Yep, FM Lopez. Ooh. In a very nice position, actually. Wow. Let's take a look at this. Where is it? It's here. Ah, this very nice. The, wow. This is the position that chess players dream of. The final position, at least. So, she played a King's Indian. And if anybody here knows anything about the King's Indian, you know that the remaining, mo remaining moves are going to be played on the F, G, and H files. Let's see if this comes true. For sure. For sure. F5. Knight f4, queen g5, queen g4, knight h3, queen h3. <laughs> one move. One move to take, right? One move to take another piece. And then the rest of the game just 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 piling on here on this side of the board. This 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 is amazing play by 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 Ina Agrest. I mean just perfect Kings yep. Indian style. 
Exactly. If um, anybody is learning the King's Indian, this is a very instructive game on the just, kinds of attacks that work well. I mean, just and White doesn't even have any time to do anything on the nope. Queen's side to counterattack. You play the King's Indian, right? Or I do I... play the King's Indian. That's why I got excited. I probably was a little biased. No, but I mean, like it's 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 really good. I mean, this is this is this is what you need to win. The the final round, if it's six six, it's one game. It comes down to one game of chess, and she played a great game of chess, and that's that's all you can exactly. ask for. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, seven six. Keeping the dream alive for the button button snowball. Seven six. Seven six. As Fridman is looking like he's winning. Very nice move here by Fridman. Rook c one. Nuanced move. The point is that if you swap rooks, you cannot take b7. Again, my friends, we've had a, a, a piece defending a, a promoting pawn like four or five times today, and it's never it's never worked out. The point is that you're always going to c8 with a tempo. This is the idea that you have rook c8 with check. So the king is stuck back here, and so is the bishop. And the other idea is that if you block the check or you take the pawn, rook c8, rook b7, and bishop h6, and that's it. The dark squared weaknesses around the king proved decisive. So this is um, this is oh, a very. Oh, how do you sing? Baden Baden always wins the final round. Well, so we're Baden, gonna see here, right, Greg? Baden Baden is clutch. I mean, Fridman completely crushed in round three, and then said, uh, "Actually, friends, you 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 for, you forgot about you forgot about uh, you forgot about Frids." Yeah. So Rook c one, and yeah, it looks is... over. I mean, Bishop e five, yep. maybe. Oh, can we style on them, Alexandra? So, okay, well, wait, Bishop wait, 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 wait. The Grandmaster oh. Jewel Mossard and the Grandmaster Mate Shevenik game did end up in a draw. The engine was right. It was a zero zero. Oh, foul. man. Oh, man, Alexandra, how do we, we just how do we miss that one? My chat. Oh, my God. Wow. I told you, I told you, commentators are bad. I want the other ones. I want the, uh, I want Hess and Anna. You guys are bad. So yeah, engine wins again, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, um, the engine always knows. It just knows. I mean, th that's just chess. Insanely complicated game, equal. It's flatlined, dead. Heart monitor not not going up, so. Um, oh man. All so, right. uh, Fridman Sorry. won. Fridman won. So we've yeah. got Georg Meyer on the big screen, and the last person playing for Baden Baden is, uh, is Dimitri Kollers. Okay. So, uh, I, I, apologies, apologies. Wait, and, and uh, Jorg Meyer. So, Kimten 94 and I am Dimitri. Tortuga Chess, thank you for the tier 1 sub. That's Vlad Dobrov. Grandmaster subscription. Shout out <laughs> to Vlad Dobrov. <clears throat> oh, man. Okay, so, let, uh, the, we still have one more game going on. It's two more games, right? Yes, in the bottom bottom mashup, exactly. Perfect. Uh, so, I'm so fine. Sorry, what was the username of? Um... Oh, I, never mind. I got it. Okay. Mhm. Mm Eight and six. So the bottom bottom snowballs just need another half point, and then they win. There's there's three more games going. Yes. No, no, no. Not in bottom bottom match. Not in Baden Baden match? No, because Baden Baden. Well, I love saying this. I love saying this, a city two times. Like, it's like, can, can we say like Ljubljana, Ljubljana? Can we just. Uh, Norway, Norway? Uh, yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. It's uh, because there was already two decisive results. Like you said, the board 4 1, and then Fridman won. Okay, with Ruxine, you're right. And... Yeah, and the, the score is 14, so two more games. Okay. Yeah. Great. We are looking at the game between George and Wouter. Okay, what do you think here? Well, Gerk has gotten his patented position. He's got a slight edge. He's got very active pieces, and the uh, the queenside pawn structure is obviously in his favor. He's got A and B, which is always slightly better than C and A, and he's he's pressuring for sure. And he's up three minutes on the clock. And you're a better commentator than me. <laughs> don't don't make me time you out, Levy. I'll do I know, it. right? <laughs> so. Um. Okay. I, I love chat is suddenly getting into uh, into a debate about about commentators chat it's 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 in an all-star lineup did it, we did it because we brought up the engine and we all know oh, that yes. 
we, we're, one day we're going to be replaced by AI commentators and then nobody's going to argue with anything. Yes, exactly. And, and engine virtually and exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. So. I, honestly, probably the players are going to be AI too. Just so all becoming cyborgs. Okay. I'm done with this dystopian yes. future. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, God, I'm I see. I see the bro. I see the bro saying, uh, "I'm Russian. Uh, I am." But this is uh, unfortunate. I cannot. I cannot demonstrate these skills here. It's uh, English commentary. Wow. Uh, this game, Collars du Carmon, is crazy right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so remember, Baden Baden can't lose, right? So if yep. Gerg makes a draw, they win the match. Yep. And uh, um, if anybody can can draw games, <laughs> it's him. So. Knight takes f6. I, for one, welcome our robot overlords. So Okay, I'm uh, glad you guys welcome our robot overlords. No, Alexandra, I, I, I just think this match is, is, is over for Baden Baden. We, we honestly could even tune into Berlin. No respect. Uh, wow, no, no respect, no disrespect to, wow, uh, to mean... Amsterdam. But no, I mean, it's just, I mean, Gerg Meyer can make a draw at the snap of his fingers, right? And then they win. You're right. You're right. Um, okay, so, so yeah, let, let's check out the Cannes Blitzstreams in Berlin Bear game because that one is a lot more close. And so, wow, what is going on in the game between Grandmaster Eric Braun and Grandmaster Maxime Lagarde? I think uh, we're gonna have a fun time trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. Okay, terrific. That's what I like to hear. I'm looking yeah. for my my main my main main Ricky Keats and Baby Legs. Yeah. Shout out to Baby Legs. Ricky Keats. Um. So I think is Riki a, f a fictional childhood character like one of those like stories because there's Riki Tiki Tavi I know that that's like the the ferret or the raccoon or something well, I, like that. I just searched Riki Keats and the only thing that comes up is Maxime Lagarde's chess account, so maybe not. Maybe he just knows something we don't about the world. That's true. That's true. Uh, there's another game. Uh, no, this is the nor uh, the so the, let's look at Bloodstream. Mm-hmm. Mongoose, okay. mongoose. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. So, we are are looking at this game, right? White is looking at f seven to potentially take, but White can't do anything because his king queen is under attack. Um, Black's king is awkwardly placed, but at least he has pieces blockading. White's king is where it should be, but it has no pawns in front of the king. There's so much asymmetry in this game that I feel very inclined to see how they're gonna figure it out right um and it was an english opening which you do know very well i mean i i don't know i don't know if i would give myself that much credit um but it's uh you mean um well i mean I, I, to, to be perfectly honest like one of the reasons i stay away from playing the english is the symmetrical english is it symmetrical English? I can't. Well, I can't do it. Here. I can, yeah, but but uh, these two obviously knew that they had to, you know, both play for a win, and total nonsense broke loose. I mean, the knight hopped around, f6, g4, h6, and f for those of you watching, sometimes watching titled players is like, wait, they're breaking every rule I'm told not to break. Like, no, don't don't move your pieces several times in the opening without developing everything. Exactly. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, very confused. So, uh, this this game went off the rails a little bit. Icelandic Gambit, I totally agree. Um, in the first and, fifteen moves, sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, in the first fifteen moves, Black moved a knight eight times. Eight times out of fifteen. Ladies and gentlemen, if my math is correct, that is more than fifty percent. What are we at? Yeah embarrassed i mean come on like well i mean white is also the one i think in this craziness i still prefer white's position here um because he just has he has more pieces pointing towards black's king what's gonna happen if he ever moves the epon and is looking towards e7 i guess I'm... the knight is also hanging so maybe not okay let's let's see them figure it out maybe we could George Meyer won his game. Yeah, no, okay. He did yeah. Not draw. He won his game. He won, which means that Berlin wins 10 6 and Ljubljana also wins 10 6. So, very impressive job by both those teams, really turning it up. Their, their top boards very consistent throughout, getting the win. So, mm -hmm. yeah, not much to say. I mean, they just did a fantastic job today in, in, in the third and fourth, I guess, round of, of the match. So, uh, 
Yeah, this is a this is a very complex position, and and now all eyes on these two bottom matches. No right. decisive results yet, and and we just got another win from Grandmaster Creaker, who is on the Cans Blitzstreams against Berlin Bears. So that's going to bring their score up to seven and a half. Oh, so there is a decisive result. I apologize. So it just happened now, though. Literally just happened, and uh, whoa. Exactly. Wait. Sorry. How do you guys pronounce his his name? It's not George. It's Georg. 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 Okay, thank you. Oh, just just a uh, yeah. I guess Jonas Lampert was just. I mean, he just got a little bit out prepared, got a little bit too confused, maybe in 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 the opening, and yeah, that wasn't that wasn't very pretty. Right. Um, yeah, it does I, seem like Creaker just had control of the entire game there he was much more active his knights and bishops were placed in the best positions of all time and lampert wasn't able to to catch up with it okay so the baden baden snowballs have just won the match nine to six so we have another decisive match game so i guess let's stick to the the blitz streams for a little longer and then all eyes on the gnomes and the raptors they're the Absolutely. high profile game you know, ranked number one and number two in their section with the gnomes slightly leading. Yeah, Let's the gnomes see. right now with a one point lead. Uh, Khan's blue streams are a win away from clinching a victory. And mm -hmm. I saw someone in chat write something like, This is too fast for me. I'm sorry. It's too fast for us. You, you <laughs> don't think that we're sitting here at the all knowing entities. I mean, some of these, we, we miss some games, right? I mean, it, and that's right. okay. We gotta, we gotta hand and, you know, pick and choose yeah. and. And then when we don't miss games, you got the Grandmaster Braun and Grandmaster Lagarde game, which is just extremely complicated. So we'll, we'll try to look at some of the, the more instructive games. Um, well, we also kind of get lucky. We pick rabbits out of a hat. Chad, if, if anybody kind of is curious how this works, um, you know, the main host in this, in this case, you know, myself, who's, who's running the streaming program, I'm looking at games, drawing arrows, and whoever's the co-host, you know, ha ha has a tough job because like they, they have to they have to match commentary level and also you know look at other games. They got to dig around because if I dig, the game changes right, right on screen, and then everybody goes, "Stop it! Don't go back! Go back! Don't change the channel in the middle of you know of the of the football game." I was watching that. So, right, right. Well, speaking of games that are looking pretty interesting, uh -huh. um, the Norway <laughs> gnomes. We have uh, Grandmaster Yoon Ludwig Hammer against Grandmaster Daniel Force and Esteban. This is an exciting game to watch because Hammer has his rooks forked right now, but I'm still not sure that he's worse off. So whenever you can say that sentence, it's a game worth looking at. Well, this is Especially yeah, this is probably the highest one of the highest profile matches matchups of this. Hammer Hammer did the opposite. He didn't disrespect his bishops. His bishops. No, are Hammer up. Hammer really appreciates his bishops. He gives. Well, I was going to say us, but you respect your bishops. He gives me a hard time when I trade off my bishops too early in the games. And, and this for, is wild. Forsen, the fan favorite. Yeah. Chad is like, oh, Forsen! Now everybody look. Take a quick look. Yes, the knight is on f2, and yes, it is forking the rooks. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, you know, if Hammer can take this knight, right, for a rook, that would only be being down in exchange. Right. Any time in chess you have a bishop or a knight for a rook. Now, generally, that's, you know, that's bad but it's it's worse to be down a full piece or a piece for a pawn because the capabilities as the game goes on of a knight or a bishop compared to a pawn are significantly bigger distinction there mm -hmm. than a rook for a knight and especially in closed positions the rooks are not going to be so powerful for Forsen. and on top of all this he's not you know hammer's not even going to be down a pure exchange he's going to win a pawn at least maybe two right and the bishops are very powerful and i like hammer here so no, i totally agree um, I don't even know if he has to lose his e6 pawn or if he can't just play f5 and try to hold that yeah, as well. Just f5 and... Yeah, these G8. bishops are OP. That is yeah. what's happening in this position. Please nerf. <laughs> so, now I know what that means. Yeah, yes, we, we, we figured this out. We, uh, we taught Alexandra a couple streams ago what please nerf meant. Just yeah. kidding, she knew it all along. All along. Um, Interesting position. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a good last round fight. Very complicated. Um... Yeah, Icelandic Gambit says two bishops plus a couple of pawns should be great. Oh, and one of those bishops has just died. As we look away, the bishop has traded. Okay, I was looking away at other games, and the bishops have trade. Uh uh. But I know uh -uh. why Hammer did Hammer, that. Don't disrespect your bishops, Hammer. Oh, this is the moment I've been waiting for. So he takes now on b7, and the point here is that the e6 pawn is untouchable since you'll always bring the bishop back to d5. The 
The rooks are still forked. You're going to lose one of them. But now if the bishop ever comes back to d5, uh, it's just a beautiful chain of pawns. I mean, it's like cascades, right. you know? It's like a waterfall. You're right. And uh... He has the pawn chain from a2 to e6. He's also closed off the king side for now, mm -hmm. which is which is nice because otherwise black would be able to potentially support the e3 pawn or bring his rook into f2. So it's great that his position is closed here, but what is he going to do after the knight takes one of his rooks? I guess he's going to go and grab that e3 pawn and he's sitting much more comfortably than Esteban. And and the king has very quick access to the center, like king c2, king c3, king d4. It's basically being given like a VIP ticket to the pool at the hotel. And I'm telling you, I'm 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 going to that pool. I mean, now he's also got like... Well, I, I commend Black's patience, let's put it this way, for not taking yeah. the rooks, just chat. You see, it's a virtue. Okay. Um, so I think here Hammer has at least a draw if he plays bishop b7 and just brings the bishop back to d5, right? So bishop b7. The, the last game just ended between the Baden-Baden Snowballs and Amsterdam Mosquitoes. Okay, so 10-6, yeah. It's 10-6 again, so these all started very close and ending in 10-6. No, it's it's really, really good performance of the top boards and just consistent play throughout. I mean, this is what you need to win 10-6 and not 8.5, 7.5. It's, it's, it shows really, you know, good consistency, good balance. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, what, because thinks Black is just better or winning in Hammer's game? Oh, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, the thing is that, you know, at the end of the day, we can make fools of ourselves if there's ever, you know, the uh, the, the, the beep beep boop thingy uh, supporting chat's, uh, chat assertions. But I, I like this position for white. I, I don't quite know how to play this for an right. advantage. With and I, I think another important point is the game is so closed off. And sure, black is going to be able to push c6 and kick out the bishop. But in so, such a close position, the rooks aren't as powerful it's much harder to maneuver them around and be able to win upon if you're playing from black's perspective just moving moving around the uh well i mean hammer hammer we will keep on the screen but there's two games still remaining in 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 the uh the blitz streams match and those are uh paul velton versus it's felix paul velton mm -hmm. just to pull that one up for everybody he's it he's got he's playing with the black pieces here uh and he's got the tall task Excuse me, he's got a relatively easy task of holding an endgame 4 minutes versus 8 seconds. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that any half point would at least seal a draw right. for the blitz streams. And there's one final game uh, remaining in that match. That's Blitzstream himself, Kevin Bordy, who is on the black side of some, some pressure, but... For sure... Uh oh, hang on. I don't. So what happens after? Yeah, g six exactly. Because if the bishop takes, bishop takes. If the king goes to h eight, I'm pretty sure white has rook d five, eyeing the h five pawn, and almost checkmating black. Right, this is this is a crazy situation, everybody. We're looking at the bottom right of the screen, mm -hmm. uh, and it 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 looks as though black is simply up a piece, but and and can even take another <laughs> a rook on e six for free. I mean, well, I mean, m meaning that you would elevate yourself from being up a piece to up a rook. But oh, what it what an interesting decision. So he plays bishop g five, and just an instructional moment there for everybody uh -huh. in the chat. The reason why you couldn't enter this variation is because after, as Alexandra said, uh, rook d5 here would be rook h5, and it would just be checkmate. A little, little rodeo there with rook d5, rook h5. Mm -hmm. and uh, Yeah, and for somebody asking the analysis board being different, for those of you just tuning in now, we're looking at two different games since they're both wrapping up. So in the analysis board, we're looking at the game between National Master Kevin Bordy and I am Steve Berger. It's one of the last games in this team matchup. Um, so Bishop, yeah, Bishop F7, Kevin Bordy trying to, he, he's, you know, he can, he can wiggle out. He can definitely wiggle out, especially with white only having, you know, 
what, what is that yeah. eight seconds now with increment so i mean white has so many pawns he can just continue to push that black rook is going to be tied to h5 most likely because if he's not close enough right. the white rook can swing on over and attack it so levy what do you think about the idea of just pushing those queenside pawns trying to create one more weakness in black's position I, I think you've got to try something. I mean, we're going to see a lot of different things from White here. With seven seconds on the clock in, in this intensive a game, I mean, you know that you can actually save the match, mm -hmm. uh, potentially. I mean, there's three games going on, right? So they could win it. They could 3-0, which would be really impressive. Right. I don't see right. any reason why they should count this game as, as a bust. I mean, this looks really hard for Black. Yeah, so yeah, no. I, I mean, I think the Berlin Bears are definitely fighting for a win in this game. And you, you said there's only one other game, right? Yeah, so we have Paul Velton, we're looking at uh, Kevin Bordy and Ricky Keats, that, that insane game we were looking at. But Ricky Keats is up in exchange, and we pulled this up here on the bottom right for everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the Rook End game with Paul Velton is on the big screen, but we can actually put this game on top of it. Uh, wow, I mean, total pandemonium. Up in exchange, but Black crushing on the light squares. And this should be four! He hung an x-ray. No, there was bishop before, wasn't there? You're right, you're right, you're right. He did have bishop he, he's, before. He simply had bishop before there. And now rook b1, you can maybe... Are they going to repeat? Oh. oh, they're not repeating. He, he plays I mean, queen b1. I, I think if they trade off queens, obviously white is slightly better, but black should be able to hold that as a draw. What do you think? If queens were off the board right now? Yeah, if queens are off, I think, I think with the light squared blockade, and again, everybody, the opposite colored bishops is a... It's a concept, you know, known to many chess players as just kind of an equal end game, but uh, it's not, it's not, it's not easy here. It's, it's, it's. There's a lot more pieces on the board, but if you actually get rid of the queens, black can create a light squared blockade that you can't break through. So right. So uh, white is trying to find something, anything else. Um, I mean, black might be playing for a win here. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's. Yeah, you're down in well, exchange. You're but... right, because because uh, he doesn't know how his teammates are doing, and he knows that they have to come back. So even though he's down the exchange, he might mm -hmm. feel forced to fight for a win here. So <sighs> that's a good point. This is a uh, oh, queenie two. He's gonna force a queen trade. This will make his life significantly simpler from the pressure perspective. But chances are that you know he could have just thrown away a lot of winning possibilities because it, it, it's just this is too difficult to break through in terms of the pawns. Right. Um, so. Right. Okay. Well, let's let's go. Oh, I guess you have one of them on the analysis board as well. It looks like the game between it's Felix and Paul Velton a draw. Okay, they just drew. They drew. It looks so like what just should what just happened. So a draw. There's two games left. Uh oh, eight six, eight six. Okay, the Berlin Bears need to win both of those games to not lose the match. Yep. So I'm gonna yeah. pull up the other no game pressure. here. That game is uh, is Blitzstream and Berger. And oh my goodness. Berger is going to win. He's it's going to be 8-7. It's going to be 8-7. It's okay. an exciting matchup. He's going to win. I mean, he's completely winning. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So that means that Eric Braun, down in exchange, has to try to fight for a win in that game. I don't know if he's going to fight for a win or just accept a draw and count his individual score as something important for the team later on. Okay, so 95. Berger gets the victory. Grandmaster uh, Hammer's game is also looking pretty interesting. They're also in time pressure, but I guess those are the two games we can keep on the board. Yeah, we have a high-rated player in the chat saying that he, he disagrees with my evaluations, but I, I don't understand how you would win this as black. And if you do, kudos. Very impressive. But it, it I mean, this is, going, this is heading toward equality. The point is that... Wait, is somebody uh, saying black is better here? No, I mean, no, no, no. Not, not, I'm sorry, uh, black or white. I mean, it, it, it's oh, okay. like... The thing is that uh, Lagarde, right? Mm -hmm. He uh, he's got the white pieces, so he's happy with the draw. Of course, and so yeah. He he has nothing to risk really. He can play rook take. You know what he can play to force the draw? He can play rook takes c six and bishop takes b six probably, and it's just the draw because it's the wrong color bishop. But uh, oh yeah, I... just taking the knight. That, that that's true. He could do that. Um, oh. and he he is playing with just six seconds. And he must know his team's score by now. So I'm surprised that he's actually pushing for a win here. 
Exactly. As Greg says, with little time, unless you have someone telling you or messaging you, like behind you, you know, like the yeah. chess broad they play, you know, they play in the same house, like you don't know. You just don't know. And you don't know what the score is. So you might think you always have to win. And... Right. Right. I mean, he might end up winning this game and that's probably the most likely result. But then you do have to think, even if there's a 10% chance that you don't and you're being a team player, is it worth the risk? Exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, um, I would win this as black. 1,000 ELO. Okay, so there's one trade, and... All right, it looks like it looks like the Blitzstreams are going to win by the narrowest of margins of victory, which is, you know, eight yeah. and a half or nine, yeah. so it, it depends how they do, but... Uh, but it, this game is at least a draw, so I think we've decided that. Most likely a win, at least a draw. Um... So How looking... are our gnomes and raptors doing? That's a very close game as well. Six and a half to five and a half. Yes, and I'm looking at uh, Larso. He's struggling, but he has equal material against uh, Ippolito, but he has seven minutes versus eight seconds. Oh my gosh. So That is the worst time imbalance we've seen in a while. Oh, he won. He won very quickly, actually. Lagarde gets the win, so it's 9-7 for Blitzstreams, and... Uh... Now okay. we're just we're just we're just waiting for the world to change, but also on the final on the final matchup. All right, chat. What are your predictions? Norway gnomes versus Barcelona Raptors. Let's hear it. We're gonna see pretty soon if you guys are correct or not. And hi, Tagbon. Good to see you. Tagbon, long time no see. It's been I don't know. It's been a week, but in in Twitch that feels like an eternity sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, this 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 is uh, so Ippolito trying to hold Larso probably playing this. Well, no, probably going to be a draw. The, the game between Larso and Ippolito, but there is okay. some small chance that Larso actually can pull this off with the same colored bishop. Um, what? He resigned here. Wait I'm, so wait, I'm sorry. Is he just completely losing? What, just king it? What? So let's try to figure out what the line is here. Okay. I guess just so king d2, king f3. Ah, it's just... Oh, he bishop e5. He, he just trades off the bishop. Yeah, well, yes, but also... Maybe not because of bishop. bishop no, this is this is this is pretty. That came out of nowhere. I was actually, I was anticipating a couple moves. Okay, I mean, some fatigue gonna get made fun of as well. But I I, I was quite certain that you could. You could have done a better job holding that from here. I mean, he he blitzed some moves and. Uh... Yeah, I don't know if he had to resign or just play a little bit longer here, but I guess he didn't know what to do with the 23 seconds. Maybe he saw some losing line, so. Yeah, wow. Um, That's, but, uh, but, I mean, oh, to lose like that. Jose yeah. Herrera is also winning his position. Yeah, and he just did. Stewie Griffin won by resignation. Wow, oh my gosh, leaves, the Raptors it, are coming back. That leaves... So, uh, seven and a half to seven and a half, right? right? Wait, so yeah, Ferrero wins and, excuse me, uh, Herrera wins and... Sorry, seven and a half to six and a half. Seven and a half, I think six and a half, yes. Yeah, because there's two games left, so that's yes. the only way it makes sense. Okay. Um, I guess let's stick to these last games then, since they're so decisive. Let's, hopefully the gnomes can get at least a draw. That's probably what they want to do here to make sure. And I think Hammer wants to draw in the position he has right now. Do you have both games on the yes, board? Yes, yes. So you yes, have I'm, Hammer, I'm and to... in the right you have Mr. Johan Solomon playing against Grandmaster Russell. So those are the two games you guys see, chat. The last ones in this league. But uh, Johan Solomon is just up a piece. Yeah, he's going to win. So if... If Solomon, and we can put him on, uh, you know, on, the, on, the, on the big screen here. Mm-hmm. Solomon is just a piece up. And You're two right. pawns, by the way. Two You're pawns. Right. I need to be very careful with my evaluation. Chad is, Chad is swarming. They're like piranhas right now. Every no. word. No, so I, I actually hadn't looked at the game yet when I was trying to build up the anticipation with two games left. And I come here and you point out that White's just up a piece. So I guess the Norway Gnomes are just going to win this. Yes, exactly. So uh, it looks like it looks like he's pulling away with eight and a half. And, you know, there goes there goes another pawn. And... Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to jump the gun, but uh, I think, uh, I, I think that that the gnomes are winning it. What do you think? 
I think so too. And uh, if we replay the broadcast, I'm pretty sure I said that before the games even started. So we were cheering for the gnomes, and we were cheering. I mean, okay, not cheering. We were very. I, I was just saying that they. That's what I thought would happen this match because of how they yes. changed their their lineup. Even though Barcelona Raptors was just totally winning. So. The gnomes move on, right? I mean, I suppose, I suppose they 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 go into uh, they go into the 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 crazy week that we're gonna have in week four with the um, I forgot, I, I'm I'm I'm, bl I'm blanking on the name. Basically, the uh, the brawling, you know, the where you where you, with the mix up of the teams and <laughs> right, the chess right, right. is cute, exactly. The, the change up where teams are playing teams from other divisions. Uh, this is gonna be really exciting because. It helps even it out in case one of the divisions is a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. So we're we're gonna see. That's gonna be madness. But let's let's enjoy these last couple games. Last here couple moments the, together, the also of commentary. The storm. And, yeah. So battle royale. There you go. See, it's named after Fortnite. So the battle royale. Good one, Greg. How could we forget this, Alexandra? Oh, Hikaru's gonna love this. It's gonna oh, like he's gonna the whole time. Yeah. All right, I gotta build. I gotta build. I gotta build. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Exactly. Battle Royale is going to be fun, uh, where you mix up teams from divisions and you've kind of bridge bridge the gap between some of the teams that are, you know, you're like, ah, they're too strong, they're going to wreck a division or something like that. So um, you see Greg there talking about the format. So Yeah. Uh, well, let's follow Hammer's game. That's the one that's not decisive yet, even though his team is going to win. It yeah. is a pretty instructive endgame. It's been clinched. So we'll finish it off. It's been clinched. Johan Solomon with a win. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hammer is going to try his best here, but obviously not necessarily guaranteed. Uh, and the sign-off is going to be fun. This, this, today was great. Today was very, very exciting. Right. A lot of great, great matchups. And they were close until, well, they weren't. Um, was, yeah. And I linked have... Hammer in the chat as well, even though you should be able to... Okay, no, he's not on the extension right now. If you guys want to see him playing, he's the last game. Um, see if he's nervous at all. Is he nervous? I mean, I don't think he's nervous. No, I think he, he just knows looks what like he's won. thinking. Yeah, this just... this should be a, a draw. Um, a draw. Yeah, I think White is going to draw this. Do you disagree? A draw. I wonder how long we're going to have to wait. So, if you're playing, <laughs> if you're playing in the shoes of Daniel Forsen, do you do you just offer a draw because you know you're going to draw the game, or do you try to fight to save some dignity? What do you think we're going to do? I guess um, I, I don't see what Black would do to convert this to a win. Um, I mean, if Bla White just keeps his king on F2 and the bishop protecting the pawns, because we're speaking of peace coordination, right? And his, his rook can be used to check the king and try to keep up perpetuals or defend if he ever needs it. I, I don't know how Black would win this game no 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 i mean it was it, it was uh well now now hammer is offering him a capture on e2 um and there it is so we're gonna go king and rook are we at rook c6 rook e6 Th this is how grandmasters do it or rook e3 is he gonna take okay he takes yeah. i don't know you can't flag him and so we have a we have a final result and nine six the final score line of that match, we had, uh, excuse me, excuse me, 9-7. Six and a half does not get a demotion with, uh, uh, so. 9-7, 9-7, 10-6, 10-6. Really, uh, great games today. I mean, great fighting spirit. A lot of second half surges. We saw a really close, tense match the first two rounds, but ultimately the Central Division, uh, proving to be a, I mean, a, a, a tough division to, to fight in, in, in the third yeah. and fourth round of a match. So, uh, um, tomorrow... Tomorrow, what we have, everybody, is uh, we, we're coming. We're going coming back to the Atlantic and Pacific divisions uh, at at one twenty p.m. Pacific, four twenty p.m. Uh, Eastern time. We've got the Atlantic division. That's going to be myself. So those of you that didn't like me today, you know in advance when not to show up. And Jen Shahade is coming back. So that one's going to be interesting because we have the big matchup of Chesbra versus St. Louis, and we have. Um, we have the Marshals, which is my team, so a lot of a lot of uh, commentator favorites there. And then at five uh, five fifteen p.m. Pacific time, eight fifteen p.m. Eastern, we have Alexandra coming back with none other than Chesbra himself. Uh, excuse me, no, no, it won't be it won't be Hamilton. No, it, it's going to be David Pruis. I am David Pruis. Yeah. Yes, it's going to be David Pruis. It's not going to be Chesbra because Chesbra is playing tomorrow. Right. Um, so he's so... he's probably going to be doing it on his account. Um, is there anywhere you could see the schedule? Well, you could go to the Pro Chess League website as well. Um, 
do you have a, a better recommendation by any chance? No, the, no, the Protest League website is, is amazing and it's constantly being improved. I mean, if, if users ever give some sort of feedback that say something's not working, gets fixed, Craig Shahadi is really, really on top of things, everybody. Now, uh, please do stick around because we are actually going to raid those amazing people that are taking on the St. Louis, not even Archbishops, the St. Louis Goliaths tomorrow in the Protest right, League. So we're raiding the chess bras. Get yes. excited, you guys. Wish them luck. Pump them up. It's going to be the chess drama of the season. They're fighting against a former chess bra who has, <laughs> been, you know, brought uh, into yeah, the other Fabiano. team. So there All we right, go. everybody. So we are, uh, we're signing off. This has been, this has been great. You know, uh, my first time working with, with this amazing co-host uh, and uh, hope first everyone enjoyed. First time on PCL, but we're going to keep streaming together. So yeah. So no, it was a joke, but I mean, we'll see you in the chess bra channel, everybody. We're signing off. Take it easy and go give them some of your energy as they play Blitz or what you know what one of the amazing things that they do.